Okay. Alright, let's make sure we get our timer started at the right point. Now, yeah. I guess the timer on screen will be following our TA time intervention. Which is to the file right there. But, uh, as far as like task videos and tool assisted speedrunning goes, in general, usually start timer from console power on, right? Yeah, normally uh, we do, yeah, but... Everything in terms of what the title of the video will be and what the guesses that everyone's been submitting. Some great guesses, by the way. Um, it will all be using uh, RTA time. Oh, nice. We get a moon kick off right off the bat. Yeah. Cool. So that saves, I think it's five frames over rolling, uh, just because you are at a uh, steady speed for a little longer. Mm -hmm. And... First instance of a phase walk, if anyone wants to do any counting during this run, uh, it'll be a lot of counting. Yeah, I can imagine that phase walks are going to be used very frequently. Yeah. <laughs> so what was kind of the last major hurdle to making the transition from low tad to TAS? Um, I always knew that the um, next thing I'd do in terms of 101 or whoever did it was going to be a TAS. It was just kind of waiting until an innovation came up to kind of spawn that. And an mm -hmm. innovation came, as you'll see, because the innovation is a trick called Wrong Barrel Resolution, and it has... And I am not under like overstating this at all. It has completely changed the route. It is such a game changer in terms of the way things are done. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I was also thinking in terms of like, I don't know, emulator technology and whatnot. Uh, you know, being able to do all the spawn snags without hacked vision and stuff like that. Yeah, it's mostly just persistence. It's like <laughs> when people or when someone would have the time and uh, persistent energy to do something. So this is uh, called Hal Swap. It's a trick found by Legendary Tap Ring Rush uh, by Pure Accident. And it allows you to skip the cutscene there and go straight to DK's house. Saves a little bit of time. It was kind of a precursor to, you know, like kind of some of the overlapping cutscene stuff that we've been, we've been doing later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very unique void out warp situation. So, okay, this is no surprise. We're going to get the fairy camera immediately. But orange clipping Ooh. is the fastest way in there. So, a fun little trick here. If you go close enough to a wall, it skips the animation DK does with a shockwave. Saves a oh. little bit of time, but That's it's uh, it's a very interesting trick that I also found by complete accident. <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting that was, way to that go. Was, I peak. was not expecting that. Yeah, I didn't even consider trying that before. Alright, so viewers of 101 probably are familiar with the Castle Kong's route concept that basically your first level's generally going to be Angry Aztec for Key 5, and you're going to make your way to Creepy Castle pretty early. To unlock all the cons. And for so sure those and for those wow. players who have no idea what the heck we mean when we said go to Aztec to get key five, like that's probably foreign to randomizer players for sure. Um, you can actually get key five to spawn if you do the quick kill on Dogadon One in Angry Aztec. It'll actually just spawn key five for you. It's great. And it's shorter than doing it in Fungi. Because you don't have that long boss cutscene at the end. Yep. Alright, first collectible. Hype. 
one blueprint. One blue, the first collectible in the run. So as you'll see kind of on the left hand side of the screen, not only do we have an input tracker, so you can see all of the inputs that I painstakingly made over the past two years, but also there is a totals tracker, which will show uh, how much of each item we have and the game percentage that the uh, game is at. That's very cool. How did you actually um, script that to work? Is it like using a memory watch or is it manually put together? Uh, the input tracker is reading off the input file. The uh, stats tracker is me entering the frame which I got certain items. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, so this is the first TBS. Input. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, take a look at that top left hand corner. Yeah, so uh, the old low tats uh, had the black and white screen uh, by using a hack to see exactly what is going on under TBS. Uh, we can't use that for a TAS because that uses a hack which isn't allowed. But um, we use this instead, which is a preview of what it would look like uh, if you could see Joan TBS on the top left. And that will be playing at various points in the run. I've not done it for every single TBS section, just ones where I feel like... Um, like there's a lot going on. A lot is going on, yeah, and knowing what is where will help out. Do you kind of want to explain TBS as well for those who aren't really sure? Yeah, sure. So TBS is a trick where um, normally when you enter a tag barrel, it puts you into a movement state where you cannot move at all. So moving the stick does nothing, uh, pressing A does nothing outside of uh, tagging the Kong. But if you change your movement state on the frame before, you get that lock. Um, to certain various different movement states, so crouching, uh, falling, a couple of other things here and there. Um, it will prevent that movement right to the state which locks you and your controls, um, and therefore you can move around in TBS, or whilst you have control of the tag barrel, I should say, which uh, the general concept is called TBS. Yeah, tag rail storage is extremely powerful, especially in a tool assisted setting. Um, even in RTA, it has a couple of big skips that leverage it, um, most of them being spawn snags, um, which play a huge factor in this run because we've got a lot of golden bananas that require like mini games or puzzles to be completed, and many of those can be uh, snagged from an unloaded okay. state, or rather if the area that the GB spawns in is unloaded, you can grab the, the golden banana so long as you reach its location without loading the area. And that's how we were able to use that TBS to get the, the golden banana in front of the llama cage. We, we might have, <laughs> if you hadn't noticed while we were doing that TBS cam, the DK just picked up a GB in front of the llama cage. That's not like normally there until you complete the Baboon Blast course in Aztec. Uh, but with the power of spawn snagging and TBS, uh, there are a lot of Bone Bananas in the run that take advantage of that. And it saves probably, I would say, a majority <laughs> of the time, like compared between what the task can do and what RTA can do, well, other than just like movement optimizations. Yeah, and also whilst <laughs> Zenenicus was given a wonderful explanation of spawn snagging, uh, we did a trick called Dogadon Quick, uh, which is a trick to kill uh, Dogadon, which is the big dragonfly boss. And if you take damage at the same frame at which the uh, TNT barrel hits him, uh, he will give you key five. It will think that the fungi uh, version of the boss has been defeated and it'll give you key five. Um, if you're interested in more about that, I have a video which you can watch after the task, uh, of course, uh, which goes to a thorough explanation of it. Yeah, it's a really useful trick. Definitely blew open routing possibilities when it was discovered since it gives early access to Creepy Castle, and uh, it's also just like faster than having to go to Fungi and do the whole Dogadon fight there. It's really useful in bingos as well. 
Shoutouts to Bingo. Everyone should try it at least once if you're a fan of playing this game and doing glitches. Alright, so now we've gotten Key 5 turned in. We have access to all the main levels. Since, you know, B lockers don't really mean anything to us, we can either slap through them or clip past them in every level lobby. Sadly, you do need to get keys to get into some of the lobbies, like Castle, for instance. That's the main reason why we got key five, because the ki the can just simply isn't spawned until you turn in key five. Yeah, every other level lobby, you can reach its loading zone without it, the key turned in. Yeah, so it's kind of fortunate that um, you can get use a glitch to get key five really quickly in that regard. Wow, I really like how well used the moon kicks are so far in this run compared to how like an RTA would scale the the uh, the rooms because like so far route wise this isn't that different than what you would see at the beginning of an RTA run like the only difference was getting that extra llama uh, llama GB in Aztec one but in terms of the movement that you're using with the moon kicks and stuff. It's really nice. Here's to see what bananas you get here, because like you skipped a good chunk coming up. Yeah, there's a lot of um, interesting decisions in terms of how or what bananas we get, because we have to get to 75 uh, color bananas per Kong per level in order to get the medal. So. There's not many we can skip, but... Yeah, you get 25 to skip yeah. for each comp, for each level. And that's a really fun part of trying to route 101, is figuring out which 25 are the slowest. And sometimes it changes depending on the context of other tricks or routes being uh, thought about or worked in. That, like, some bananas that seem out of the way, it's like, oh, you know what, actually these are better because will be going through that area for some other trick or something. So this is a trick called Cut Up Kongs, and to those if you uh, want to explain that. Yeah, so um, this is patch of randomizer, so this is not something like randomizer players are familiar with, but um, for K rule Kongs, basically you can see right here, you kind of cycle through all the Kongs without them leave, and then just by pause exiting and leaving the boss fight, you just keep the Kong that you're currently as, and you don't actually have the Kong until you enter the tag barrel with that Kong. So you saw Balam run to the tag barrel after he left the boss fight. You see it with Lanky Kong right here, and he did TBS, which you don't need to do, but you get the once you bring the Kong into the tag barrel, you have them. Yeah, well, the tag rail storage here just saves a couple seconds uh, because you basically maintain control of your Kong the entire time instead of waiting for the tag uh, to be completed. So you'll see that the tag rail storage is used in almost, I assume, almost every tag barrel usage just to save that one or two seconds each time. Yeah, it's kind of like... Those are the kind of minor TBS usage that I'm talking about that don't get a TBS count because you don't need to know kind of the two seconds which happen where it's either a phase walk or a uh, O stand TBS, no coil or something like that. <laughs> it's yeah. all like uh, pretty standard stuff. Hmm. So who's been watching closely in terms of how many cons we freed already? You may notice something odd about the fact that we're actually fighting the boss now. Yeah, and like, I guess from, from a viewer's point, like, it wouldn't have made sense to just free all the Kongs right now and just be done with it, but we only freed a Diddy and Mikey. Yeah. Now you can free one more Kong, either Tiny or Chunky, while collecting the boss key, which I'm sure we're gonna do, but it's interesting that we're not freeing all five Kongs here right away. I guess it makes sense. And also a lot of the movement that you saw there is aggressive lag reduction. So oh, for, anyone, right. 
<laughs> for anyone who's played DK64 on the N64, it is incredibly, incredibly laggy uh, in some parts of the game. So a lot of the stuff like this, where we're going up against the wall, we've got camera face a certain way, we're going to the bottom of uh, cutout, it's all in the name of reducing lag, which makes the boss go faster. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. I hadn't really even... Like, I think I just took it for granted <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Um, but now that I'm paying more attention to the sort of unusual swimming patterns and camera manipulation, yeah, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. And the big thing also with Cutout as well, that also dictates some of the movement, is that it is filled with an enemy called Puffed Up, which is a puffer fish which explodes, and when it explodes, it generates quite a fair bit of lag. So we want to be as far away from them as possible so that they don't aggro onto the Kong and therefore don't explode, which will cause lag and slow down cutout. Yeah. And also so that they don't hit you and stun you. That too. <laughs> All right. Nice invisible Kong grab that you get and so we're done castle boss and we've got four of the five cons well technically we have not freed tiny yet until uh, tiny has a tag barrel True. yes this is uh the phantom bananas now which are a side effect of freeing a kong through a boss fight like this where we haven't actually freed the kong but since we're playing as them they can pick up certain collectibles, uh, even though they're not made visible yet. Um, the exception here is that you cannot shoot balloons. Like, balloons do not actually exist until you officially free the Kong. But that those small nice color bananas do. Leg clip, long jump into a into an air swim. <laughs> yeah, that was a really cool movement to get over to the crypt. So, Out of Bounds... I guess now would be a good time to talk a little bit about out of bounds physics in this game for yeah, any so, viewers who aren't really familiar with it. So fortunately, out of bounds does not work like the Banjo series. Basically, once you go out of bounds, it retains your, um, I guess, Y value so that you don't lose or gain any height. You just re retain the uh, last uh, inbounds Y value that you currently had. Yeah, and you also retain like movement state. So if you go out of bounds in the water, you'll continue to swim out of bounds for as long as you, you know, remain in a swimming animation. And it'll also retain the surface level of the water. So, like, yeah, basically you can swim up to the height of, that the water plane was at when you left it. Um, now, Castle is an interesting sort of exception to the maintaining of the floor thing because castle actually sits above like a pit so normally if you were to go out of bounds you would just fall to your death if, if you were in the main area of castle but because we hit that water plane in the long jump it kept us uh it kept us from falling down and we could just swim so, uh we have like some pretty cool tricks just happen as well yeah we so here. Yeah, we do a trick called Guhan Skip, um, which, <laughs> if you take damage, it uh, prevents you getting insta-killed on the goop that uh, is between one side of the acid floor and the other side, which contains a banana. So we take damage, and then we have to move quickly enough to the banana so that by the time our iframes run out, we are um, in the air ready to collect the GB. Yeah. Normally we would use a uh, pony del twirl to help us do that more easily, but with the uh, with well spaced skid jumps and uh, jumping out of tiny slide kick, you can actually make that those distances without pony del twirl, which is pretty cool. And actually, now would be an interesting point. We could talk about what moves we're going to get or what moves we're not going to get in the run. Or see, we're buying you know guns right now. And I think we bought a couple of ammo upgrades and perhaps homing ammo, or maybe this one. Did we already buy it? Yeah, we all bought, bought homing ammo, we're tiny. Um, but no sniper so, scope. No sniper scope. So there's a couple of things to mention. Sniper scope uh, lags the game a lot because of the scope effect. 
uh, it renders a lot of images to the screen all of the time, so it's uh, not good because we don't want to have lag. And then also you may have noticed that we were right there near Cranky's with Tiny, but we didn't go in. We are going to be skipping all of Tiny's Cranky moves. So that's Mini Monkey, uh, Monkey Paw, oh, Ponytail Twirl. Wow. We're going to be skipping all of them. So we're not going to be getting any of them in the game. And we're going to have to do everything which would require those moves. Um, we're going to have to do some form of skip or sequence break to skip that. That's but how amazing. you can kill the giant Kosha? <laughs> Cl clearly, we'll that gives you a percentage in the in the game, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. it's only the items on the left hand side of the screen that count towards percentage. Some of the biggest, you know, notable things that are not included are the individual colored bananas. So we're only going to be getting enough for the metal. Uh, the rainbow coins are not part of it. So for everyone who thought that. All the 101 runs were invalidated when we found the secret rainbow coin in the grass. It's not not the case. Um, coins in general are not part of the percentage, and neither are any of the moves that you can purchase from the shops. So we're really just going to be purchasing the moves that you need to get the main collectibles. And uh, yeah, absolutely in a normal playthrough, you would be expected to buy say every move except for maybe you know like the the candy uh, instrument upgrades and health upgrades but uh being able to skip all of tiny's point of views is pretty nuts yeah, question came up in the chat why are we looking backwards um this is a very leggy section um especially with the uh dude the i guess the uh, scary guy kind of like throwing things at you um, so looking backward just decreases the lag. You can't look backward at this part, though, because it skips over this cutscene and makes it take forever, so... <laughs> yeah, that cutscene actually runs faster than not having a cutscene there. But, yeah, this is something that you may have seen, like, Adam Whitmore showcasing in his 101 run, that he can... <laughs> he learned basically how to do almost this entire minecart backwards, which is not so easy. Um, but it's pretty cool. Turns out that pressing R in all three of the minecart rides will turn your camera around, and oddly enough, the controls for each minecart are slightly different uh, when you're facing backwards. In yeah, this one, the, you have like to opposite. actually, if you look at the input viewer on the on the bottom, you'll see that the joystick is holding down when he's looking backwards, um, and holding up when he's jumping, even whether you're looking backwards or not. For whatever reason, if you're in the air, you have to hold up to move forward. <laughs> um, but not when you're on the ground. So it makes it kind of awkward to perform. But um, in like Chunky's minecart, you can just hold up on the joystick the whole time and you'll be going top speed even if you're looking backwards. And same thing for Diddy. So, kind of weird. But in Diddy minecart, you can't jump while looking backwards, but in Chunky minecart, you can. So it's like strange little quirks about the minecart rides and we are resetting the game because that would have soft locked us if we had let dk try to exit the crypt because the door was still there yeah anyone and else have anyone else have dk minecart as the third golden banana gotten in the run just me <laughs> okay <laughs> So, those who kind of have watched the earlier low the one made in 2016 by Ring Rush and then the one in 2019, um, that section would have looked pretty similar, but once it gets after, like, into Factory and afterwards, totally different. Were you able to reuse um, inputs from the previous low tads, or did you have to reprogram pretty much everything this is uh reprogrammed um mostly because we have a little bit of extra information now handy which means that going in a straight line with dk64 is a lot easier uh for tas so um hmm. yeah it's uh it's different inputs because they're better inputs nice also, I don't want to gloss over how did we get up to factory so fast. That was another 
side effect of tag barrel storage called telegrabbing, which you may have seen from the any percent routes uh, of this game that basically use it to get up to hideout helm immediately. Um, you do a glitchy ledge grab pull up and due to your stored position from the tag rail storage, you're warped uh, a lot higher than you would normally be, I guess. That's a very a very basic way of explaining it. It's more complicated under the hood. It's a very uh, swag way of getting up to this barrel here. Wow, this mini game is one of those like really funny ones in the test. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. basically get two hits off. Um, I think if you shoot back to back frames, which is impossible to do in as a player, I guess. It's not impossible. It's just hard. You have to do a specific set of inputs on consecutive frames, which is uh, shoot a uh, shoot where the GB is, then reload the next frame, then shoot again on the next frame. So do you get triples with that in a task setting, or just doubles? Triples later on. Ah, uh, okay. I'll talk about triples when we uh, get to triples. Okay, because I, yeah, I know that you can do doubles RTA, but it's just tough. So there we skipped handstand for uh, that one there <laughs> to get up the pipe. It's quite tough. It requires a little bit of lag from the uh, kasplat down there, shock waving, but yeah. Oh wow. So actually, does that mean that? Well, I don't know if it's just because it was inconvenient to buy a rank ten prior to this point in the run, but uh, you plan on getting Linky's moves? Yes, Lanky's moves will be involved. Oh, okay. They're, they're required. It will be, ne it will be needed for certain parts of the run. So oh, this is something more. fun, which got found in 2016, but only recently we found out why it works. Uh, so introducing Double Beaver. Oh, yeah. Double, be Double Beaver... Ah, I can't say this. Double Beaver is really cool. You basically have one frame while the beaver is falling in the hole to bark at it again, and it'll count twice. Yeah. So you can just cut your beavers in half. And that is a lot faster than the uh, shockwave method, which is sad to see that not being used anymore, but double beaver is just way faster. Yeah, and probably more fun. Oh, TBS this is interesting. There. No, we probably we'll don't need it. Yeah, We're just going up fair. the pipe. But this is pretty interesting because I think you're freeing Chunky right now. Yeah. But because of tag rail storage, you were able to like interrupt the cutscene of freeing Chunky, so you wouldn't have to actually watch it. Yep. So now's a good time for donations. Yeah, okay, um, we have a $200 donation from the Sound Events that says, Every time I hear Oh Banana during this run, I'll donate an extra dollar. So, thanks, Sound Defense, for that. Um, I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot Thank of Oh so Bananas. <laughs> He's a very generous guy. Donated $1 in the NLE GDQ run just gone. Donating it right here, right now. I'm definitely curious to see all the moves we're getting here, though. Um, definitely interested to see Gorilla Grab. Um, I don't think you could ever skip Gorilla Grab. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends. Uh, if there was a way to spawn snag Lighthouse GB, maybe. But Arcade round two. Arcade round two oh, is yeah, also that a one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately... Nintendo coin behaves a little bit differently to the GB, so we can't spawn snag uh, Nintendo coin. So you will be seeing some high quality 8 bit action later on. And every Kong needs their instrument, for sure. Yeah. Because of the squawks, GBs. So 
So, we are getting a rank stand, but there is one lanky move which we'll be skipping. Oh. Really? We are going to be skipping a rank stand sprint. Oh boy. That is kind of surprising. Mainly because I don't know what you're going to do in the beetle race in caves, but... You'll have to wait and see. I will see. I will see what you came up with. I guess... I guess you have the power of clipping anywhere you want, basically, so it's not going to be that hard. There's a new strat in Caves Beetle Race, let's just say. Ooh. Something that wasn't in the 2019 low tab. Oh, Very boy. Nice. So we just got a few bits of uh, move buying here. Thankfully, this is the only move buying you'll see in the run. Um, after it, it's just plain sailing to the end in terms of high quality donk gameplay. Um, but we do have to buy moves because they are necessary for beating the game. Well, surely you have to buy like Punky's Gun and maybe Diddy's or whoever you didn't buy it with. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be. Um, I think. But Tiny's moves. As well. Super Sla or oh, Super Duper Simian Slam and Orangstan Sprint are the only moves that I'm skipping. And obviously sniper scope and the instrument well instrument yeah. upgrades and armor belt two. Yeah, yeah. We do get armor belt one because you need armor belt one to get homing, and homing is absolutely required for one GB in the game. Mm, so maybe it in the future we won't need homing. If we can figure that one GB out. If we can figure out one singular GB, then it probably will be excluded. Hey, one more set of moves, I believe. I think so. Mm -hmm. And I imagine... Simming Spring is one of those where, like, it's probably just faster to have the move than to skip it everywhere that you could skip it. Yeah, it's one of those... There are moves which we can skip that uh, we do get, but it's just slower to skip. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, Simian Spring is a good example. We can skip Simian Spring, but there is a trick called a Star Tail, which we'll go over when uh, we actually do Star Tails, which... Uh, makes uh, those kinds of things a lot more advantageous to get. Also, fun fact, Diddy is the fastest potion drinker of the Kong family. Fastest so. potion drinker, fastest swimmer, what can't he do? I know, right? Highest Part of the coin routing here is also... <laughs> cleverly set up so that our Kongs don't have enough coins to buy Candy's upgrades, so you get kicked out of the shop quicker. So we didn't buy Trombone after Lanky stuff because we do need to end a section on Lanky, um, and there's no good way to do Lanky last, so we kind of had to split Lanky's section into two parts. Hmm. Oh, okay, TBS cam. So we are in tech bro storage, but this is another side effect of TBS we can use, where we get into a rank stand as we begin TBS, and that I thought was going to be more relevant but than it was, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess not in that particular use case. But pay attention to other times when we get into TBS with a rank stand because... It will give us the ability to clip walls in a new, different way. Yeah. It's also like one of the big reasons why we got the running stand is uh, it's used for the Nike's fastest movement method, and it is also um, used for glitches. So even if uh, we could skip it like fully, which we can skip it fully, um, we just don't want to because it's just. <laughs> it saves way more time uh, to get it than uh, not. Oh, this is a cool orange oh, wow. clip. I don't recall if that was in the old low tad. 
Uh, no, it wasn't. I did a phase walk near uh, where Arcade Run 1GB is. Oh wow, you just have enough height to make that without a backflip. That's pretty amazing. Dang, eat it. <laughs> Bad hit detection wheel. <laughs> So I damaged in a very particular direction because just barely with a chunk loading lag clip, Ooh. you can clip out there. Nice. I think chunk loading lag clips are one of the like t uh, task specialties. Where it's like in RTA, if you think about lag clips, it's usually you gotta throw four oranges and hope that you generated enough. But oh, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, in. Uh, Another way of taking advantage of lag to get a clip through a wall is uh, when you load a chunk of a level, it's basically like you pan the camera over to the next section of the level that needs to be loaded, and there's like, you know, just that moment of when the game is loading it, it takes a couple of frames, so you get a little lag spike, and positioning that well can be enough to, uh, enough to clip the wall. So I think this looks like arcade round one skip. Yeah. Yep. A little different than how you do it in RTA. It looked like you went over the room instead of... Oh yep, wait, what is going yeah. on here? We need TBS. So uh, <laughs> during that we got arcade round one GB. So that's one round of arcade skipped. But we also pulled the lever and took damage from it, which... Uh, stores the lever Welcome now when a lever you've pulled a lever and then you store it the game remembers oh you've started to pull this lever i'm going to wait until you finish pulling to uh trigger the Form lever the or whatever. Yeah. but it doesn't check for how Whoa. Like, what? <laughs> yeah yeah phase lock <laughs> um it doesn't check Oh, you've reached this certain point in the left animation. It just says, "Oh, you've had animation going on for a certain period of time." So this comes a little bit into play, probably in around about two minutes' time. Okay, so keep the lever in the back of your mind because the game is also keeping it in the back of its memory. Yeah. <laughs> If for those who don't know, the DK Arcade Gold Banana score in the pipe that Chunky is right next to right there. Um, so that's what they were doing during TBS, getting that Gold Banana, so when they enter Arcade, they can just do DK Arcade Round 2 and get the Nintendo coin right away. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the Nintendo coin is, like, stored on the map anywhere, so we can't, like, grab it via TBS like we did the Gold Banana. Yeah, we were yeah. doing the Arcade. Yeah, Nint the Nintendo coin operates a little bit differently. Um, it gives you it through a cutscene rather than just colliding with it. So, um, yeah, it's impossible to spawn snag using conventional methods. Whoa, that was cool. <laughs> so that's yeah. a trick called... Um, Animation yeah, castle. <laughs> yeah, you uh, replace the shockwave with a stun lock and it's, uh, that's the animation time by a lot. That was, that was cool very satisfying movement for the dark room bananas. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to ask a little about, you know, you mentioned that you had an easier tool for moving in straight lines compared to the previous uh, low tads. But yeah. I also noticed you are like doing these alternating long jump and running attacks, which I guess give better speed than just repeated long jumps. Is that like a newer discovery as well? Uh, that was found, I think, when oh, the old was Lotad before. was being made. Um, it persists your speed of 150 for a little longer, so it does increase your speed like by a little bit. It's not done everywhere because trying to find the right angle can sometimes lead you to rolling in a really weird direction, which loses you basically all the time it would gain. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, also, wow, <laughs> we stood in a... We stood in a doorway of the power shed and we did the idle animation, which is just long enough with Tiny to trigger the lever pull, 
which means that just before we enter Power Shed, we trigger the arcade lever to go, oh, you should enter arcade. We then enter the Power Shed, pull the lever to turn on production room, and then it goes back to the factory map and would start the production room cutscene, but then it goes, oh, I should be uh, pulling you into arcade. So it pulls us into arcade instead, which also skips the production room cutscene. That is brilliant. That it's also really thematic that you're going from like one lever to another lever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing too crazy with those first two. <laughs> Nice hanging out on the edge there. There's the 75 Oh, you skip. actually made an early cycle. Yeah. It's just barely possible. Oh wow, crossing is the fastest for this, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think the climbing animation is like a little slower than running back and forth, so you try to maximize the amount of running, and yeah. those like perfect turnarounds let you continue without jumping, because jumping is like a little slower speed than running as well. Yeah. Very nice. So that was some, uh, if I do say so myself, some Steve Weeby level gameplay right now. <laughs> <laughs> and now oh, we're back at the show. <laughs> <laughs> right, because we were exiting the power shed when we got pulled in. That's so confusing. Yeah. So, now we're yeah, going to... So do you to actually the have the direction. Nintendo coin? Did it still grant it to you, even though you weren't in it's, front of the arcade? It, we don't have Nintendo coin yet. Uh, the game remembers, oh, i got to give you Nintendo coin when... Oh, okay, we so that cutscene is stored, ever. but you have to go back to the arcade room or have it loaded. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So... Here's some uh, high quality gameplay that's going to be coming up. Oh, we got Mad Jack. DK Mad Jack. So we enter once, and it uh, would play a cutscene, but thankfully we can pause exit and re enter, and it will skip the uh, 40 second long cutscene. Yep. This fight is a lot more entertaining with moon kicks anyways. Also, we don't have ponytail twirl, so would have been a little annoying trying to do this with tiny. Yeah. And definitely not as fast. So this is one of the bigger time saves from the low tad. Um the 2019 low tad did this as chunky. Um really? whereas um I yeah. about that. Yeah, being able to mooncake directly to the switch spawn has got to save a decent amount of time. So how hard was the manipulation to get the switches to spawn for this fight where you want them to? Pretty hard. It's, um... The random number generator uh, ticks multiple times up per frame, and changing movement ever so slightly can cause massive variations in terms of where it spawns, and <laughs> it tends to be quite stubborn at the worst times when you want it to change to a more advantageous spot. It's just like, no, I'm always going to just spawn here. I'm glad you were able to find a nice pattern for it. I guess yeah. the one nice thing is that you have like a lot of different options uh, on the grand scale of like you can have him jump to all sorts of different corners. Yeah, it's it's a, one of the harder things to task just because it's quite yeah. RNG intensive. Um, also here, the lag is so bad that I have to pause exit because pause exiting is faster because the lag is so <laughs> bad. <laughs> That's amazing. So we started a production room cutscene, but we didn't quite get pulled back into Power Shed, so uh Whoops oh. Power Shed. Oh 
So all that time you spent in the production room, it was actually like waiting for the cutscene to finish also? Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. I must have made routing factory very tricky because made it a of all little the warping tough. back and forth. Made it a little bit tough. Um, thankfully, this section is like pretty easy to rat out as things go. Would you call that like an extended phase walk or something? Because I know that those walls are not, you know, able to be phase walked in the typical sense. Um, yeah, that phase walk took a lot. Took a lot because the walls are quite chunky. Well, so that was a spawn snag, and this is a new trick which was found by our Lord and Savior Ring Rush. Um, if you shockwave uh, and then pause to unpress B and then press B on a certain frame during the unpause, you can Welcome take a photo Wednesday. while shockwaved, and then if you release B, you unshock or you release the shockwave, so you skip the photo taking animation and you can move during that so that saves yeah, quite a lot of time <laughs> sorry no counting lesson for me tat mr tass is too good good enough not need to know how to count for the counting game yeah and that's an interesting it's a rare case where you can actually spawn snag a golden banana without the uh, effect of tbs to like use the tag barrel void because I don't know, it just so happens that that area does not uh, automatically load when you get close to it if you come from the right spot from out of bounds. So there we got the um, bonus GB that we got, and then we go close enough to arcade room, <laughs> and that's Nintendo coin. That's hilarious. Nice. So Diddy collects the Nintendo coin. That's the only way you're ever going to do that, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was some pretty sick climbing right there. Welcome to bonus day. That was the Star Tail, I think. Yeah, that was Star Tail. So Star Tail is kind of like a Moon Tail, but you perform it as you're using the Simian Spring launch. So in the same way that a Moon Tail gives you some like added height from the, it's like you're performing Diddy's grounded attack during the double jump. This is like you're performing your grounded attack with the height of a Simian Spring pad. So you get even higher. We also only shoot at max three shots at a time in that. Uh, not because of any limitation we're being unable to, but it, any more than that causes lag, which means that the minigame will complete slower. Oh. Oh, that's Whoa. a cool trick. So here's um, that's a, a fun TBS section. We're going on oh. a bit of a trip, guys. Wait, oh, so first of all, that was Crash Climb, right? Uh, Crash Climb TBS, yeah. Cra Crash Climb TBS, which is the only way for Diddy... Well, Diddy can also fall from a height and do Uncrash TBS that way. But Diddy doesn't have a skid jump like the other Kong, so... Crash Climb is like a niche trick for him to be able to get it. Okay, it looks like we make our way into Diddy's R&D room. Oh, and the GB is just there in the air. Yep, and we have to and, move tail uh, up to it. We get our balloons. I guess even though the area is unloaded, the balloons are not unloaded? No, That's we have to go into first person to... Um, oh, that. going into first person. Even though the screen is yeah, still black, it does load the room yeah. and the objects in the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the camera is no longer locked on the tag barrel view. And this is another spawn snaggable GB way up in the air. From so that's, the Toy Monster. Uh, I'm sorry, I think his name is Entropy uh, in the Rando server, who is a uh, lover of the Toy Monster. We're not going to be doing Toy Monster today. Yeah, we have a lot of different names for the Toy Monster in the randomized community, but unfortunately, not today. So are we just spawn sagging like three of the four GBs in our needle? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. that's gonna cut off a lot of time from factory. Yeah, those GBs are pretty long. Um, the other benefit of not spawn sagging this one in with TBS is that we can do a dance skip on that one. Oh. 
Right, because I guess you normally can't... Wow, you just clipped right through that uh, yep. glass? Yep. Was that like a chunk loading thing? Yeah. Or just... Huh. Where are we going? The crown? Yeah. looks like a crown. Okay. So, welcome to the first round of the run. There are ten of them that we got to do, where we have got to uh, waste a certain amount of time. Crowns are very hard to task. Not because, like, of any tricks you've got to do that are difficult, or anything else. They are just so <laughs> boring from a task perspective, and it's so long. It's probably around about five, seven minutes of the task is just trying to make these interesting. <laughs> So, uh, this one here is the factory one, we got a Kasplat, and I think two Kremlings we got to uh, kill. So, we're just waiting around for the crown to spawn. You can pause exit on the frame that it spawns, which is pretty nice. And it looks like Lanky is going to finish his medal here. Huh. We are only 50 minutes in. And we've already done all the early game stuff. And it looks like we're going to be done factory pretty soon, too. Yeah. I don't know. 50 minutes in, only 10% done. That clearly means it's going to be a 500 minute run, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, hmm. right? <laughs> gonna be quite a long run this one so car race uh, we got to do two laps of this and the car asks us to collect uh, 10 coins on the way and if we collect two, uh, 10 coins and then uh, beat him we, we get the uh, GB you're not exactly collecting that many coins it, it almost looks like you're intentionally skipping the coins yeah hmm. well I mean gotta collect like you know like we don't have to collect 11 we only have to collect 10 right true true it's just i guess you can cut it as close as you want in yeah. a test. let's just let's just make sure that we uh we get at least 10 before the finish line which is it's coming up pretty pretty soon yeah God, I, I mean I think it's dead, gonna I make this. we've got eight there's there's still i mean you could have got that one uh, Are there, mean, uh, uh, isn't there uh, only one Oh, oh, I thought... Wait, what did you mean? Oh, oh, he's gotten that one. We had... That's the finish oh, line. What did you do? You, you failed this. Oh, this, oh my this God. is wait, a wait, waiver. Wait, wait. Did Balam cheat? It said winner, oh. even though he had nine. Wait, now, it's, now he has ten. What? What just happened? <laughs> what? We are controlling Tiny in the car race. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's a cool trick. To explain, um, we got nine coins there because we have to be one coin away from winning. And then if you collect, if you end the race with nine coins, it will queue up. Oh, you've got you, you've lost the race. But then if you collect a tenth coin um, during the fade uh, from the race perspective to like the perspective of, oh, here's the results kind of thing. Um, it goes, oh, you've actually won the race, but it's already queued up the cutscene for you've lost the race. So you can gain control out of that, which means we can void, which is faster than pause exiting and pause exiting again. Here's more TV. That's very cool. Right, so we, interesting, we're doing like production room in two trips, I guess. Because we were already here earlier when we were doing that crazy lever storage stuff. Or rather, to, like, warp back to the, uh, the power hut. Jeez, this looks really awkward. <laughs> okay. I guess the only good way of getting a dance skip on that one is, uh, letting the crusher hit you. Dude, yeah. are you gonna kill the blueprint from, like, moving platforms? Oh my god. Yeah. That was sick. <laughs> That's amazing. And a ledge clip. Got the moonwalk going. We don't need no Strong Kong or Out of Bounds. We can just time 
our jumps perfectly not to get hit by any of the crushers or fireballs. So there's a really easy out of bounds in that room that anyone can do by just walking into a corner, but you need to collect the easy bananas, so didn't have to do it. Yeah. Are we so actually Factory. done with the level? Yeah. Yeah, Factory's done. Nice. So, chat, Under where do you think we're going next? Minutes. What do you think is the next level? Those who actually know, don't say. I'm going to guess Grunty Industries. Wow. DK Isles. <laughs> That'll be the next one. Oh, Surely we'll, we're going to exit into DK Isles. Oh, look, gotcha. I'm right. <laughs> I, I, I didn't count for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Zerinka's wins. Wrap it up. Ho, ho, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do the bats affect that trick you just did? Yes. <laughs> So we go in the helm uh, oh, for a very specific reason. And what so, reason could that possibly be? Is it that we just, you know, need PA? Is it just that we need to uh, get the helm medals? And it's just a convenient time to do it. Let's find out. So conventional RTA routes do Galleon after factory. We're doing helm. Um, because we need that timer at the bottom. Uh, that timer is going to be very useful for a trick which I mentioned earlier on called Wrong Barrel Resolution, um, which I'll talk a little bit more when we get to kind of when it hits zero. But for now, we just need to uh, be in Helm. And I thought, might as well get Key 8. It's uh, actually necessary because a key priority. Um, when you turn in keys to K Lomsey, they turn in a specific order. So we need to collect Key 8 now rather than later on in the run. Um, because, yeah. But yeah, like, forever since we've been doing 101 runs, at least on the US version of the game, uh, one of the big limitations with this level is that you have to shut down the Blastomatic by completing all five of the Kong's minigames in order to collect their medals. Otherwise, the medals will be uncollectible forever if you try to skip that. Um, yeah. And so, conventionally speaking, Helm has always been done in one trip. We've had to do all 10 mini games, shut down the Blastomatic, which also clears the timer, and move on with the run. This is the first time, in my knowledge anyway, that a 101 route, or at least the task route, is being built off of a sort of two visit Helm. And it's all with this, uh, this spawn snag usage. Or, yeah. Sorry, not spawn stack. I said the wrong thing. Um, fla uh, resolution. Long barrel resolution. So that's telegraph fungi, Ellie. <laughs> so in the old load tad, fungi was actually the last level we went to around about three and a half hours into the run. Um, so us being in here, you know, an hour in, pretty unorthodox. Yeah. So. Yeah, this, this part's just super interesting. So basically, we've got 7 minutes and 48 seconds left to kill. Uh, and try to get as much stuff done as we can. And then be set up for the next, the next important trick, basically, at the end of the 7 minutes. So, figuring out the route for this must have been really hard <laughs> to, to judge what you could or couldn't get done in time. Yeah. It's, it's a rough ride. There's a lot of, like... it Routing a 101% task, especially one which involves as many changes as this one, um, ain't an easy ride. But speaking of easy rides, this is Chunky Minecart Ride. And, again, we can look backwards. And this is probably not too difficult to look backwards for a good chunk of it, because you can... Just hold up the whole time, you can jump, uh, and this helps reduce the lag, but it also cancels cutscenes that play mid-ride, so uh, there's a few cutscenes, one in particular that's quite long, um, that we just skip by looking backwards. There's one of them, you can see the black bars quickly appearing and disappearing on the top and bottom of the screen. Yeah. So. Uh, we're not always looking back, 
for this. Uh, sometimes we need to look forward to load something, and then sometimes looking back actually uh, is laggier um, because it causes more lag. There's something going on behind us which just causes more lag. <laughs> This is the one where, yeah, skipping the cutscene here, the big man with the teeth. Also, we need 50 coins to beat this one. And we don't have a an extra coin after the finish line to bail us out this time, so... It's yeah. nothing I'm aware of. Yeah, this one we have to get 50 coins. We can't do, do a uh, factory car race. The GB. Wait, so the GB's Sorry. just down there? Yep, GB's down there. <laughs> and that's Spider Boss GB. <laughs> Amazing. Everyone's favorite banana fairy. There's another one of those shockwave fairy cutscene skips. Wow, <laughs> that is really wacky looking with all the lag that you get. Yeah. <laughs> and but like it the, also... the rotating picture. <laughs> yeah. The important thing with that is that it skips the um, refill, which takes a good like five seconds or something like that. So. Now. That's a fun fact. Oranges can activate the night switch. Wait, how are you in the tag barrel already? Because I used the oranges to get lagged and I long jumped into the tag barrel. What is nice. going on? <laughs> so, so this is a uh, fun is side this, effect. This is <laughs> not actually get... TBS, right? You're not... No. Yeah, you don't have control of the tag barrel. It's just that the top and bottom of the screen are not rendering correctly because of the cutscene tag overlap thing. Yeah, when a regular cutscene plays and then you interrupt it with something like a tag barrel, um, this kind of funny effect happens <laughs> where the uh, top and the bottom of the screen, uh, I believe the technical answer is that the frame buffer doesn't clear, 
So, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> all of the replays is happening like on top of each other. All right, so we've got about a minute left on our helm timer, and it's a good thing we've come to the giant mushroom area because this is where we need to set up our long barrel resolution. So, what do we mean by a long barrel resolution? What is a barrel resolution in the first place? We're basically so, referring to these bonus barrels, like the one that we're doing right now, for example. So when you when you complete a bonus barrel, the game, you know, when you're exiting the bonus barrel, the game is setting something in memory to basically say, oh, okay, we have to resolve, we have to basically give you the golden banana from whatever bonus barrel you just completed is. But rather than like hard tying that to the mini game you were actually doing, I think it roughly just finds whatever the nearest bonus barrel to you that there is in whatever area you're loading into and then resolves that one to give you its GB. And so we're going to take advantage of a sequence of uh, warps basically to resolve the owl race bonus barrel which is in fungi which at now that we've cleared the bonus barrel at the top the next closest bonus barrel to us from this crown location is the owl race bonus barrel so keep that in mind okay so now what happens when we when we warp on the crown like this um, so explain. now uh we've got a seat where the map that is stored in memory for oh come back here is fungi forest that's why we game over entering forest crown because it clears the um the game over clears the hot stored maps and then we enter the crown which uh it says oh store fungi so fungi is currently stored and now we're just doing some stuff in aisles just to clear it up and when we do another bonus barrel disappearing um, the boulder nice magic tricks yeah <laughs> it, it, this is my uh famous magic mm. trick we're actually warping them to the origin i think not quite the origin you'll see them in a second oh really okay cool funny uh <laughs> they land in a funny place. <laughs> At least I found them funny. So we landed and near there, uh, close enough to tag, and then we grabbed a tree to walk back up here. Oh. So that was what the pause was, and then we long jumped off, close enough to load tag barrel, load tagged, and grabbed a tree. So there's oh, the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so so referring to the crown situation any um any like crown or bonus barrel that you enter basically tells the game uh Welcome like go back game. to this map in this location when you are done with whatever like sub area that you're currently in being either a mini game or a crown so right now we're doing a bonus barrel and the game knows that you know we should warp you back to your last saved um, position in your last save level from whatever sub area you were last in and that happens to now be the fungi battle crown so now we're at the fungi battle crown <laughs> <laughs> and because we were completing a bonus barrel the game also checks the closest bonus barrel to you within a very wide, thankfully generous radius, and resolves that. So also the game is queued up Diddy's bonus barrel and the owl for the owl race to be considered completed, which is the entire purpose of doing this whole setup, because skipping the owl race is a multi-minute time save. Yeah. In isolation, at least. How big is said radius? Well, uh, 1600 units. I believe that's so excessively large, especially if the game develops a no expectation of you even 
going that far away from a gold banana at some point, or a bonus barrel. Yeah, there's definitely no reason to be that far away. But yeah. Thankfully it does, because it results in this. <laughs> this yeah. run is because of that. Um, so now our race is resolved, but now it gets into a bit of a funny territory, because now the last place to warp you to is the snide room and it's Enough still there yet. waiting for you to do something else to warp you back to snide room so um the next bonus barrel we enter you know might take us to snide room instead and we might get into a funny kind of uh swip swap chain yeah so like as amazing as that already was to be able to skip the owl race we are not done yet with wrong barrel resolution Every bonus barrel that, well, okay, it's not every bonus barrel. There's some weird quirks about, like, which ones can or can't work based on are they in sub areas of the map or not. But uh, without getting into, like, too many technical details, pretty much the next series of bonus barrels that we do are going to resolve back to the previously completed bonus barrel rather than the one that we're currently doing. And that makes for some really cool routing concepts. Meanwhile, though, <laughs> let's do some uh, less uh, interesting things. We're just going to be collecting some bananas with Chunky and the giant mushroom. Doing check of legends. Of course. Casual um, TBS, you know. There's a bonus barrel. Oh, uh, we yeah. could do that with Tiny, but... I know, I'm not really feeling Tiny today. I don't know about using Anarchist, I want to use DK. Sure, mm. he can Mooncake to it, so... I'm sure he can also complete the bonus barrel. Actually, uh, you'd, you'd have a hard time doing it with Tiny, considering we skipped Ponytail Twirl, so... I mean, Tiny... I like this choice. You know, Tiny's all, it is doable with Tiny without Ponytail Twirl, but... It's a bit of a I know, I've one. done it in Rando. Yeah. <laughs> I've struggled through that. <laughs> but so I like welcome this choice. to uh, <laughs> Mooncake Sortie. <or tea. laughs> <laughs> this was exactly how I played the game when I was a kid. I like it. That's actually way smoother than I thought it would be. <laughs> Where are we? You guys may have heard the sound of Snide Shop. Hmm. Oh, hmm. the boat, the rock disappeared. Uh, oh, it just went in here. That's why. What? <laughs> nice. Okay, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> I can't get you. <laughs> You're safe on the rock. It's even higher. <laughs> oh, now it's just over there. Oh, now it's back here. These enemies are probably thinking, we didn't sign up for this. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think they will have signed up for this either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there's the crossbones. <laughs> Okay, this is definitely like taking the crown for <laughs> most entertaining battle crown. <laughs> I love it. Picked him off. <laughs> I'm so glad that works. So, funny enough. <laughs> that does also save time because you don't have to place the rock down, so you save a little bit of time from the having to do the placing down animation. But also, even if it honestly, even if it lost a second, I would have probably have done that just for <laughs> just for the laugh. How of cool it. it is! Yeah. So now we're turning in keys. So the way that uh, Kalomzi works is that it'll turn your highest key in, and then. After turning in your highest key, it will then turn in 
your lowest key in terms of the number uh, until you reload the room. So we turn in key eight because that's our highest key that we have. And then the lowest key we have is key three. And then, yeah, so we just turn both of those in. Those are the only two keys left. And as sad as this is weird to say, that's uh, bye bye to Kelly MC for the rest of the run. Um, and yeah. I remember back in the day, like, we didn't know how the key turn order worked. It took forever to figure out. Like, it sounds simple, but it took forever to figure out how the key turn order worked. Yeah. Especially if, like, we didn't have save states to check every combination quickly back in the day. Yeah. Shout outs to um, Isotage and TJ, uh, who did a lot of work behind that. Um, as much as this task is made by me, uh, we stand on the shoulder of giants, and those giants do be the glitch hunters and tasks who came before us. So. Very yeah, T TJ, Isotarge, Wilder, Jansen, you know, the, the, yeah, the you know. big giants. <laughs> so now we're doing Galleon, uh, a little bit later in the run, but uh, yeah. Yep. Seems like a reasonable time to start doing Galleon. We can, uh, I guess, might as well start in the five door ship, why not? You can do that clip from the beginning. One of the um, more annoying fairies is here, I know. Here's a trick that not a lot of people know about. If you go into first person, I think if you hold down, you'll rotate 180 degrees. Yeah. You can just you do press, that really easily. Yeah, if you That's press C, down, and A um, on the same frame, you turn to face the camera. That very photo just laughs in the face of anyone who's tried to just do that RTA. <laughs> yeah. So, fun fact about these uh, five door ship rooms and the two door ship room, I'm sure you may have noticed, but the uh, different Kong sections are actually connected in the same map. So, after getting Tiny's Golden Banana, we could head over to DK's side and do his bonus barrel. And normally, like, this would be pretty useless because uh, it's like, you know, you need DK to pick up the GB. But, as of wrong barrel resolution, we are now back in Fungi, and we get Tiny's Bonus Barrel GB. So, it all works out. And the great thing is, we're not even done yet. You know, I was gonna ask Balan for level splits, but I'm, I'm like, with wrong barrel resolution, that would have been, like, really hard to calculate out. Yeah. I mean, technically, this is Fungi 3 right here. Yeah, but I refer to this as Fungalion. Because we are simultaneously in Fungi and Galleon, more or less. There's a quick question in the chat. Did maintaining oh, enough orders oh. become a challenge at any point during the task? Uh, yes. <laughs> Oranges and orange management is a huge thing. I have a um, part of my spreadsheet uh, which I use for kind of planning this out, which dictates how many oranges I'm going to use for each clip, each dance skip, each separate different thing. Um, it's all there, and especially with the fairy shockwave skips, uh, that skips the refill, so I don't get any oranges from those. So it not only becomes a balance between using oranges for dance skips and for clips and stuff like that, but it also then becomes a battle of uh, using oranges and then skipping the fairy cutscene animation to save time. So it's a lot of kind of moving parts together and everything is like really planned out to the what? fine tooth time. That is a laughable chunk loading like list. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this isn't DK's room. This is Lanky's room normally. This is Lanky's room, but it's a bonus barrel at this point. Hope you guys know what that means and why we would have come in here with DK. So that's a uh, triple shot. Uh, it only happens if the banana is facing a certain way. And if you press uh, the aim, then reload, aim, and then reload, and then aim, uh, on consecutive frames, you can get what is called a triple shot, which is where you get three shots for the price of one, basically. Wow. 
and yeah, also because <laughs> we're now back here, uh, DK is used to get that uh, bonus barrel resolved. So can you guys guess what's the next bonus barrel we're going to do? Considering um, that the one we have stored is for Lanky. I'm going to guess uh, either... It's probably Gold Tower, yeah. I can hmm. see that making sense, but uh, let's see if... See Fox is thinking the sub. That could work too. Lanky could certainly get in the sub easily. Yeah. Mike Champ with the tiny two door. So that I did that room in reverse just because it was fun too. It doesn't really save any time, but uh, <laughs> it's just fun to do it in reverse to how everyone else does it. This is just loading zone rando in disguise. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the tiny doer ship's gonna win. It looks like. Yeah. So this is sad to say. This is gonna be the end of our warping everywhere chain. Uh, you have to. Uh, the downside of this whole trick is that you do have to do a bonus barrel twice. So you have to kind of think about what bonus barrel you're gonna do twice and route that way. And with Tass, there's only one choice that I could have ever made to have done it. And it is Tiny Doodle Ship because it is a Kremlin Kosh. And as you're about to see, Kremlin Kosh can be beaten quite quickly. Also, it we'll helps about to, that, won't we? to begin with the, the interconnected ships. Stage. You can, you're already coming in here with Lanky to get his GP. So it takes very little time to just swing around to, uh, <laughs> God. that's some rapid fire. Oh my god. So, you might be wondering, like, how do we prevent the next bonus barrel we want to do from doing another warp? So, this whole time, our routing options have been more limited than they may have seemed. Um, these flashback warps, or wrong barrel resolution warps, only work if you never void out, you never pause exit your level, if you never... They don't work on bonus barrels in the main areas of levels, only in subrooms. Um, so that did kind of dictate a lot of the routing options that we had. Uh, but fortunately, those those Galleon ships really play to our advantage. Now look at, at TBS cam, looks like we're heading over to the rabbit race. Everyone's favorite spawn snag there. Ooh. Oh my. I like this animation. Who needs a rank stand when you can walk up? And that's our race, GB. That's just spawned. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this whole time... Our race, GB, has just I'll... been waiting, yeah. going, Hey, I'm resolved! <laughs> yep, yeah, just waiting for you to enter the area where the bonus barrel lives. For the so basically, record, the we... race, GB, was under... It was, like, inside his carrot house. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, was you do have to be out of bounds for that. So we skip round one and round two of Rabbit Race, which well, saves you a can, lot of time. You can skip Rocket Barrel here too. I forgot about that. That's wild. And yep, we don't need to see the owl. So we get Rabbit Race skip and Owl Race skip back to back, which is really cool. So now we're heading over to the Ant Hill side. I can't believe this is not even an hour and a half into the run. And we've done all this already. So I'm sorry, the bean leavers in chat. We can't pick it up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Surprised you didn't use saxophone inside that room. Uh, it's slower. It's slower. But wait, oh. wait, 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 wait. No. If, if we, if the gold banana by the bean is super high up, how are we getting it? Without the bean, oh. anyway. <laughs> I know, right? How could we forget the bean? But <laughs> we, we will see. Exactly how we would be uh, skipping the bean in a second. Well, it looks like the TBS can has something to show us. Looks like we're in the rocket barrel. Yep. 
Looks like it's going over to the giant mushroom. <laughs> Where can we be headed next? I remember doing this when I was a kid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that that skips Spongai Bee Blast. Wow, I so didn't that, know that was loaded in. Yep, that's a uh, that is in the fungi map. It's just that the bonus barrel in the Bee Blast just says, "Oh, you should spawn that." Um, it's a bit of a weird one. Um, so Very now we're doing <laughs> what <is> double TBS? <laughs> double TBS? You get another TBS while you're already TBS? Yep. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even want to begin to think about what that does to the game. <laughs> so, currently the tag barrel near B Blast is loaded. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, Can we use what, that? What to, says you can tag uh, two different you. Kongs at the same time? <laughs> well, we didn't tag two Kongs at the same time. We only tagged with one tag barrel. Ah. And so now we use this one whilst in rocket barrel. To get tiny skewed rock now. It's the only time you'll see us using feather to kill a, a blueprint, I'm sure. It's a wall yeah. throwback right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, there's the beanstalk banana. <laughs> there's bean skip, guys, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's really funny that Tiny is using a cranky move. <laughs> it's just not hers. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who needs Mini Monkey when you have Rocket Barrel? <laughs> is this actually the first uh, skew section? Uh, we haven't yeah, talked I think about so. skew yet. Yeah, basically, if you uh, exit the water facing a certain angle, um, you can uh, be face kind of lying down, and that means that collision doesn't work properly. Also, we skipped the tomatoes there. For those who uh, are paying attention will recognize wait you didn't kill the tomatoes there but you need the tomatoes to kill uh, or you need to kill the tomatoes to get grab the apple <laughs> if you destroy the apple uh, by getting kind of overcrowded by tomatoes and then pick up the tom uh, apple on the first frame that it respawns it doesn't do the check for whether you've killed the tomatoes or not so you can pick it up wow also huh. it's cool to see apples explode with fireballs Yes. Because everything in this game explodes with the fireball. <laughs> yeah, with very yeah, combustible apples. <laughs> the boulders do that. The, uh... I think what else explodes in fireball. Pretty much every carryable object. So that's another fairy skip. Cool. Do you actually... Uh, I was curious if you were going to try to, like, time the barrel entry so that it gave you the refill as you were going into the bonus barrel. Nah, we didn't need it. I guess your uh, orange spreadsheet, you calced that you had enough without it. Yeah, the way I did it was that I automatically assumed that I was not skipping any of them. Um, and then routed in the oranges, which I knew would save, like, if I were to do absolutely everything I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then progressively removed fairies that I didn't need that would save more time than what uh, things we were adding back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we did an uncrouch into that barrel, uh, which gives, gives us control, so we're now on the floor. And we can pause down skip that GB. Hmm. 
That's nice. We finally almost have enough GBs to actually enter this level normally. <laughs> This is, uh, <laughs> crown number four. So, on the edges of crowns, uh, enemies can't see you. Their, uh, visibility just extends to, like, everything but the edge. So if you stand on the edge here, that, like, Chunky, you know, you can just admire his own butterflies, uh, and the enemies just they just don't care because they can't see them. They are they're pretty blind. <laughs> Someone's about to try this in a random race and are gonna get owned because they, because Flat's gonna uh, Yeah, because Splat will still back. Yeah, <laughs> this cause Splats will just randomly shockwave, not because they see you or anything, but it's just how they like to do things, I guess. So you do have to um be careful to avoid that. So, Having this skip to be a locker one GB short <laughs> yeah. kind of hurts. <laughs> it hurts a little bit, but there was just no GB that I could route in uh, yeah. to save that. It was always just going to be better to do a B locker skip there. You could have used the code because you were playing with Chunky. I could have, but. Um, it would be slower, I think. But the extra it, text box. It would be slower, and also, I don't want to. Uh, mess with dev codes because they're banned. Ah, uh, on test videos they're banned. Okay. Well, also in speedruns they're banned as well. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. But I saw Ring Rush do it in his tasks. <laughs> so we ditched the two homing ammo because homing ammo is kind of a deficit for where we are right now, so we have to just ditch that. Hmm. Interesting. So in terms of bathroom breaks, because I'm seeing a couple people bring it up, uh, generally boss fights are safe bathroom break time. Uh, we already did one, the, more, the most interesting one anyway. <laughs> yeah, so there's probably going to be another bathroom break spot in the next 20 minutes. I never considered trying to dance skip Diddy's cage there. That's pretty cool. I like that blue shot. That was like a water level shot right there. I know, right? <laughs> wow, a normal tag barrel. Oh, and now we're TBSing. Yeah, generally, if you are tagging to do TBS afterwards um, with a different Kong, it is better to regular tag and then uh, TBS because um, it just it, like it doesn't end up like saving any time to TBS. Right, because you're not you... like using the movement to go away from the tag barrel like you normally would. Yeah, and you're usually also ending up in a situation where um, you're losing time because you're having to skid jump and do all that, or you're losing time because of the fall lock. So that's. Fun guy done, by the way. Wow, that's the whole level, huh? Yep. That flew by. And to segue, we are now flying into uh, <laughs> Peril Path Panic here. Yeah, again, only using three shots at a time because that way we don't cause any oh. additional lag. The percentage were like roughly a quarter of the way through, a little more. Yeah. But I'm sure we're not on pace for a six hour time here, so. <laughs> no, we're a little, little, little bit under that, but. <laughs> a little bit under. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to phase walk out of there because that's a double sided gate. Yeah. Ooh, caves. Cool. So, it's now time for. Uh, undeniably, and I don't care what anyone else says, the best level in the game. Crystal Caves. <laughs> it's a fun level. It should be really cool in the test as well. It's a short it's level. It's when always had some interesting over. routing, just because of the level design is a little awkward. So, you have some cool route ideas over the years. We'll definitely just see how this turns out in the test. The usual direction that you would go from the start. <laughs> Just like peeking your head through the ground for that one banana. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is a really awkward uh, dance skip to try and get because of the way they oranges behave with those uh, ice shields. They like to clip out of them and bounce in weird directions. Where are we going now with TBS? Let's see. So, Actually. this is now for a skip which saves 40 seconds. We're going to be falling quite far with Chunky. Uh, roughly to Y equals minus 5,500. <laughs> which... What? <laughs> to give some extra context, usually, I think the... Riverbed of caves is at y equals 20. Um, <laughs> so we're falling quite a while of the way down, and we're pausing because we're going to store a very low y value, and then we're going to swim all the way back up, all the way up those 5,520 units um, to the surface of caves. And as you can see on the TBS cam, we're going to telegrab all the way up, only to fall again. And we are making our way to Cave Speed Blast Jubi. Amazing. Wow. I guess it's the only way to get that much height. So, so telegraphs, I don't think we fully explained how they work, but basically, yeah, your stored position, the lower, uh, sort of like the distance that you are above your stored position gets doubled when you telegrab. So you go that much higher up from where you're doing the ledge grab. So, yeah. And and you're, normally when you go out of bounds, your floor is set, but there happens to be like a specific polygon uh, underneath snide shops where you can uh, basically have a very, uh, very low negative floor and fall basically as, long, as far as you want until the game would crash <laughs> if you go too far, I think. Yeah. So that's a really cool way to set up a telegram. Yeah. And I also tried to make sure that the uh, Y level they would set the floor as would be the lowest magnitude possible so that it uh, doesn't crash on N64 if it were to be done that way. Oh, does also, the emulator not like also crash normally? Yeah, no, it like, doesn't crash. It, uh, it doesn't crash, no. But uh, I still wanted it to be, yeah. This like it's as console much as, possible, yeah. Yeah, it's console possible legitimacy. Cool. So the ground pounds in there were so fast because we do a lot of instant acceleration. So if you hold slightly uh, back in one direction and then fall forward on the other, then uh, you go instantly at top speed. So yeah, which is also part of the secret to phase walking yeah so also another thing about caves is that uh, there's a guy who rains rocks down every 800 frames um called giant kosher he's kind of annoying um but um we do have to kind of keep that 800 frame timer in the back of our minds whilst navigating caves to make sure that we are um basically we don't want to have to watch this cutscene at any point yeah, so either we're gonna have to sort of go from sub area to sub area every 800 
frames. Or you can take a banana port warp uh, as the cutscene is beginning to over overlap it. That's what or you do can in the RTA take Meryl to counter it as well. Yeah, like we did right there. But that doesn't yeah. like clear the cutscene, it just delays it another 800 frames. Yeah, so, so we're gonna have be... to keep doing it. Yeah, we're gonna be delaying it repeatedly. Um, so, <laughs> spoiler alert, giant kosher cutscene is never gonna play. We're gonna keep delaying it further and further and further uh, for the rest of the case. And that's also <laughs> why. Oh, um, what a great picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just wanted to get some of the scenic views. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good fireball right there. Yes. That's some dark smoke. It's so funny how many times the barrel can get hit by the fireball before it explodes. Yeah. <laughs> really enjoy all these skid jumps just for the platforming and tag rail stuff. Yeah. Oh, another one there. And another one. And another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and like really slick singles. Huh. Yeah, I guess voiding can be faster than an exit enter in some cases because yeah. you don't have to load the lobby. Yeah, if you can void out quick enough, it's always better to void the next enter. What? Is that the- oh, it's the balloon in this room. Okay. Yeah. It's usually that balloon's skipped because it's kind of out of the way for DK, but high growth storage makes a lot of Otherwise, out of the way, balloons and bananas more viable than the alternatives. So, now we're going to be going over to DK's Kasplat. Uh, we're going to pick up one or two uh, colored bananas along the way. Yeah, another case of bananas that would be skipped RTA. So, yeah. <laughs> TBS also messes with lighting. Um, there's a long convoluted explanation for it, but basically it sets the chunk that the tag bar is into full brightness. Um, and then when you retag it, sets the chunk that you're in to the brightness which the chunk you had just got TBS from was. So it messes with lighting a lot. <laughs> I gosh. see we're uh, sticking with this uh, picture theme in caves. Yeah, you know, just play, you know, play Lanky's Jassy Tune. Oh yeah, there's a balloon I've got to get, so, you know, get that and also one for the photo album too. You know, want to, you know, preserve the balloon in the state it was before it got shot. Oh, I've also got a mini game to complete as well. Oh god, I take another photo for the photo album as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting thing about these um, photos. I, I know that they are laggier on an emulator than they would be on console, but they still lag quite a bit on a console. And uh, in these mini games where you have these uh, red and yellow timers, uh, thankfully they do not slow down with uh, lag in the game. So, yeah, you can like it as much as you want, and it's gonna take the same amount of time to clear that. How are we gonna beat the Beetle Race with yeah, no rank yeah. sprint? What? Well, I, I yeah, I was get thinking it. about this earlier. I, I figure there's some weird. Oh. <laughs> Bye. <Let's> get... <laughs> well, you made that look a lot simpler than I was picturing. That's just a 
a typical ledge clip, I guess. It's a bit... Mm, you have to do the aerial attack. Oh. For some reason, I couldn't get it at all without the aerial attack, but aerial attack made it pretty easy. Hmm. No, that's not RTA viable. <laughs> that's why I didn't uh, share There it. is a setup to get that gold banana by skipping the level, but that specific method, though, is not RTA viable. There's a lot of ambient lag in this part of caves, so it doesn't really surprise me you could just go through that wall. Yeah, it's a chunk load in my clip. I like how you had enough time to set up a damage uh, boost into the gold banana there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for what seems like such a short timer. That pesky waterfall balloon. Oh, yeah. but Tiny was given the bananas. What's that about? Yeah, so if you shoot a balloon and then tag to a different Kong, uh, that new Kong gets the bananas. Uh, so really like playing with them, the metal routing even further. Yeah. We so, did patch that in randomizer for reference. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed you aren't allowed to uh, use tag anywhere while there's a, a bullet out, basically. Yeah. That's basically the patch. <laughs> so, people who need to go to the toilet, <laughs> you got about three minutes. Outside of that, um, two days probably it's not a good idea to <laughs> leave just in case. But, well, yeah, that thing has been happening every like 30 minutes, and we're at 15 minutes in, so I think we're yeah. okay. <laughs> so this is a moon kick, and we're going to be doing uh, Cave's boss here in a speedy manner. Unfortunately, it's a lot of waiting around. We've got to wait for him to, uh, you know, do his slams, do his rolling, do his fireballs. So ultimate play around here. Uh, we've got DK, so unsurprisingly, that player role involves moon kicks. A bit of barrel storage. This also makes it. Yeah, it's funny. You like don't don't even really notice when the barrel hits him, but you're basically storing the TNT barrel at the start of the phase. And then, as long as DK is like busy doing other actions, he won't be, you know, walking around with the barrel. But as soon as you stop doing some action and you go back to your like idle standing position, the barrel will return to his hands. Like that. Yeah. We also take damage from him because uh, if you damage into him, he ends his rolling phase or his next rolling phase. Uh, instantly, and we will go straight to his next position. So there we place it down and picked it up. We just need to make sure the barrel doesn't explode. The barrel exploding causes a lot of lag. Um, and we just want to get it out of the way of Armadillo. I guess there's certain parts of the floor where the shockwave doesn't hit it. It's yeah. Oh, well, it's in the air also. It's, it's in the air, so that's why. So now we're coming up to the final hit. If you've gone to the bathroom break, uh, hear my voice. You should come back because there's uh, a crown. <laughs> you can't miss a crown. Huh, I didn't think you could just stand under him and the fireballs would like hit his armor in the air, I guess. It is incredibly RNG based and also precise. Huh. Good find though. Five of eight keys. Five of eight keys. <laughs> We're a little over a third of the way done. Huh, wow. That's a ledge clip? Uh, facewalk. 
Oh, face the camera. It's the, um, camera. it's the face the camera trick. Yeah. <laughs> nice little long jump there. Shadow did you, cosmic. Uh, did you ever <laughs> clip to the floor when trying to do something like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's DK64, of course I clipped through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> So, we got DK and a crown. Of course, we've got to do some moon kicks. <laughs> Shout outs to um, Xcord, who is the first person to have a uh, documented video of the moon kick. And we can't obviously be sure that he was the person who found it first because it is a relatively easy trick to pull off. But, yeah. Definitely Inci a wonderful, wonderful trick. <laughs> and incidentally, shout out to Isotar for being the first person to find the hidden rainbow coin in Fungi Forest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know, some moonwalking. And the moon jump just to finish off. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the ground for like a total of two seconds that whole crown. <laughs> yeah. So here's a new strap for Gabe's uh, five door cabin for this uh, room. Oh. You wow. don't have to do the orange clip. Is it, it literally is... just spawned up there? Yeah, it's up there. It's not even a spawn huh. snag, it's just... That's where it just resides. Wow. It's just barely above the ceiling. I'm actually really curious to see if I can try that on console. You probably could get it, but it's probably not consistent enough to... Do it like an RTA runoff. Like Probably not, stage. but now that it's just a phase walk and a moon kick from out of bounds, it looks possible to pull off. Whereas Maybe. the lag the version was like no chance. Yeah. I know you, um, RTA memers, uh, memers. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I doubt it would be something that would be used in a full game run. Nice. Oh, you never know until I try. Yep, 69 GB, guys. Ah, <laughs> uh, here's our much needed orange refill station. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not mu that not, much, though. Not that many. Yeah, I thought you would grab a little more. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> there's a good thing which is coming up, which kind of saves us from this. Um... Well, there is a potential fairy refill, but I thought it was one that you might skip. Well, okay. Yeah, the fairy refill after... Uh, you're done with the level in Isles, you can't really skip that one, so... Assuming you're... if you go to that fairy, so you're not there. So this is, uh, everyone's favorite room in, uh, Rando. <laughs> and we just beat it with, like, 30 seconds remaining, so... <laughs> Clearly, you all just need to get good. Moontail into the next door. Yeah, that was a nice little Moontail. Moontail to get the uh, rocket bow, because it's always there, you don't actually need to kill the enemies. Wow, I'm kind of surprised there's not a clip to get into the... just clip through the gate. Um, yeah, it's not really doable without a barrel, which is a long, lengthy meme. We also have to wait there, because... <laughs> Funny DK64 quirk, if you pick up the GB too quickly, the fairy doesn't spawn. So Wait, we have so to wait. So you are taking this refill? 
yeah oh. so we have a uh fair, fair bit of orange usage coming up that we just really need this fairy all right fair enough <laughs> oh, that did not look like it was gonna hit it <laughs> it's very close Time for two days' favorite mini game music. It's a shame that this is only in like a couple of the bonus barrels you do in the game. a lot of uh, enemy position RNG manipulation going on there. Yeah, especially that uh, Kasplap, which was um, chilling in the side road. We had to do a lot of like very careful positioning to get it to stay in place. Homing ammo. I wonder if that's going to be relevant. Yeah. Might be. So, this room, you gotta throw the barrels in the order one to six. Um, thankfully, the combination and the position of these uh, barrels stays consistent every single time, so you can just do this room easily like this. Something interesting about these uh, dance skips, I mean, normally in RTA you'd see a runner maybe toss the orange off the wall, wait for it to bounce back, but with a quick acceleration it's possible to just throw two oranges right next to each other and they'll like, blow up against each other in the, even without hitting any walls. Normally it's like, really tough to get hit by it, but I think if you immediately exit first person and quick excel uh, into the explosion, you can just pull it off, which is how we get all these like middle of the room dance skips. Yeah, that's that's basically it. All right, that's cave's done. Pretty oh. basic move kick over the ice maze. <laughs> cool way to end the level. So a couple things in Caves Lobby that we do need to kind of clean up quickly first. So we got the Lava GB, which we just did, and now got the Blueprint. <laughs> I guess that's a little faster than <laughs> just walking back. Cool. Alright, so... We're going to Aztec. Looks like it. Makes sense because of the homing ammo situation. Yep. Alright, it's Aztec time. So even though we can clear the B locker, it's always faster to B locker skip. So this is our Aztec revisit, so we have done Llama GB um, and a couple of DK's CBs, and also DK's blueprint, but everything else we'll have to get. Did you tag any of the Farb warps? I don't remember if you like got the warp 2 in the back half. No, we didn't. Okay. Uh, nice chunk load. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if those ones that are like you know, right after you load into an area the first time, could be consistently performed. 
because mm. like all you have to do is like hold an angle from maybe it's yeah. helped a lot in task by instant acceleration ah i see yeah so that would not be very easy no but yeah this is why we um preserve some homing ammo which makes this culture mini game a lot quicker because the game doesn't let you aim straight up the only way to fire bullets like right above you is if they home onto a target otherwise you have to wait for them to fly to the corners of the room which takes a while we also have to do that culture with grape because the um slam switch is for lanky so even if we were to um come here earlier on with another kong uh, we can only spawn the culture with grape so yeah and sadly, no tag barrel exists in the uh, tiny temple, so no TBS to save us. Yeah. And then the standard crown, thankfully a shorter one. lobby bonus right here. You have to yeah. charge oh, two nice. gongs. I really like this trick. Getting the backward charge into the bonus as it's spawning. Yeah. Alright. Kuipers uh, of the world are not going to be able to do this minigame. Everyone else <laughs> observe. Oh, how do you get the spawn up there? <laughs> so, That's incredible. <laughs> If you if your fly swatter is all the way at the top, they will always spawn at that kind of top level. Um, and so we do it so that like <laughs> we are going all the way up to the top, and then as soon as we can, we come back down to swat it, then go back up, and then swat it, and then you know it's <laughs> it's a weird quirk of the game uh, that I'm not quite sure how it happens, but it's a it's a fun quirk that allows us to do it very quickly. Nice ledge clip. Some balloons in there. Could hardly even see them. And then this is another spawn snag, I believe. Yep. It's actually pretty cool that you get to do that one in the swimming animation because it lets you do the dance skip. And it lets us swim out as well. We have to kind of go around the water there at the bottom. Um, it doesn't quite... Uh, if we were to go over it, we would be pulled to the lower water level. So right. we have to go around it in order to continue air swimming. Interesting choice for an orange clip. Yeah, unfortunately Aztec does kind of use a lot of oranges. Um, a lot of the things which you can get to, Welcome to the Day. optimal path uh, isn't uh, something you can face with. So we have to use a lot of oranges to clip where we want to go. Mm -hmm. So... Ah. In another case of <laughs> DK64 has some broken collision, <laughs> I present to you the Kremlin that <laughs> ain't too good at his job. <laughs> wow. Must be blind. Does he always do that, or did you have to minip it? Yeah, I have to minip. That's why I'm like, I'm moving chunky in specific directions. <laughs> 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 well done. And that is the only instance of Busy Barrel Barrage in the task. The other two oh. ones, which are in caves and in fungi, have already been skipped. 
Oh yeah. Welcome to bonus stage. Some uh, uh, light skid jumping to get around their detection sphere. Yeah, I was curious about the uh, the detection hitbox. So it's a 3D sphere, so like yeah. jumping over it is possible, or sort of mm -hmm. jumping over the corners of it. Yeah. So now we're coming to five door temples. Um, we're not going to do many of them <laughs> in terms of like the intended way. I mean, we've not really been doing many things in the intended way, but uh, their uh, angles and positions allow us to do some pretty, uh, pretty nice skips. Wow. Good position for oranges, also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, although Aztec consumes a lot of oranges, there's a decent amount of oranges lying around on these steps. Oh no, we've got to, we've got to save the Kong that's not there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's the only like downside of doing the Castle Kongs. You still got to go back and get the GBs that are in each of their cages. Mm-hmm. But Welcome it also means stage. that the mini games are all pretty clear, so it saves time. Not to mention just giving you that level order flexibility. Aren't you gonna help him? Uh, let's wait a little bit. <laughs> They need to learn to be patient until it's time for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna be at the very last frame. <laughs> so in doing this as DK, normally we would have to do this as Lanky by raising a few dinosaur heads, and they extend out. Um, but we... Uh, we're gonna kind of skip uh, extending those heads. Oh yeah. That's one of the tricks that I would like to do in RTA, but it's just a little too a little too difficult. A little too not quite saving enough time to be worth going for. Although, with the discovery of the fairy camera storage thing giving you easier PBS access. So we're gonna do a lag assisted skid jump, uh, a rank stand jump to get that GB as lanky. Very nice. Ah. Oh, and you can just phase walk right up the side. Okay. I mean, again, you gotta look at the TBS cam here. Yeah. So we're yeah. not actually skewed. Like we nope. would be in RTA, okay. No skew. Oh yeah, almost seagull. Um, so the TBS cam isn't like a live or like side-by-side -side rendering of the TAS's inputs. It's uh, recreated. So some minor details like having one melon might be different, but it's just there for the viewer to understand what's going on. Yeah. Oh, 
I like how you can see all of the uh, yeah the raised rocks. platforms. Yeah. <laughs> the rocks that no one ever uses anymore. <laughs> So here's an interesting trick which was found, gosh, in 2016, but yeah, again, we recently found out how it works. If you are in uh, iframes and then touch a GB whilst in contact with something that gives you damage, uh, the action of, oh, you're taking damage from something overrides the GB dance action. So you get the GB whilst skipping the dance and also skipping the knockback. That's very nice. Yeah, I remember we found that by accident in the, the free Chunky GB some time ago. But we didn't, you know, it's hard to like set it up on purpose. Yeah, it's definitely a very uh, rough thing to set up. Wow, that's a really interesting phase <laughs> angle. So like, phase angles, you know, they basically only occupy roughly a quarter of the of the 360 degree range, right? Yeah. And uh, like normally, the what I would think of as a phase angle for Aztec is including the left side wall of the temple. But I guess if you're really precise, you can go right on the door, but like facing extremely sharply to the right. Yeah, it's it's a pretty rough phase walk. You have to be alternating angles for quite a while. Yeah, it's not like the uh, three frame setup that Cartier uses. No. I actually I keep forgetting that I can look at the input viewer in the corner. My eyes yeah. are more <laughs> glued to the gameplay. This is definitely going to be fun to uh, look back on the uh, the uploaded video to pick apart some of those details with the inputs. Yeah. And I have... Some of this stuff moves by pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and we have... Um, I still have the full BK2 file, which is the uh, file format used for tasting on Bishawk, so this is tasked on Bishawk. So, anyone who does want to kind of look at uh, some things more uh, carefully, it does. There's access to those kinds of information. Uh, we're doing this boss again because remember we did the uh, cheat with this boss, so you had key 5 earlier. You have to be normally to spawn key 2. So, this is some interesting strats here. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a, a rank standing in the Dogodon fight before. That's a that's a new one. Yeah, doing <laughs> lanky Dogodon is um, isn't something you normally do, but just works out because of the crowd we're doing. It just ends up being the most optimal combo to do Dogodon with. I'm happy to see Dogodon's biggest fan did not miss the pass reveal. <laughs> Quick kill is only Dogadon 2. You can do the Quick Kill on Dogadon 1, but you get the Dogadon 2 key if you do that, which is key 5. You cannot Quick Kill Dogadon 1 because you can't get key 2 that way. Right. Yeah, so we have to do Dogadon normally once. And I guess the reason you didn't do it in Aztec 1 is because it would have turned in key 2 instead of key 3 when you were at k Lumsey's earlier. Yeah, key priority. priority. We, uh, it would attend in key 2 and then we couldn't exit k Lumsey because it would attend in key 7 instead. So, yeah, so you were like, yeah, 
You were forced we had to, to had to yeah. revisit the boss later. Or either long cutscene. Yeah. This was the yeah. better option. Yeah. Oh, right. Almost forgot that balloon. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you ever explain, like, Lanky's movement that you're doing? Because it's kind of like going in and out of a rang stand and jumping. Yeah, so the general premise of it is that um, if you enter a rang stand and then jump very shortly afterwards, you get a big burst of speed and your uh, jump is quite fast, faster than a long jump. But um, then we have to exit a rank stand after that jump so that we can do it again. It doesn't just work as jumping out of rank stand. It has to be jumping after shortly entering a rank stand. So we have to do that kind of like sequence of enter a rank stand, jump, exit a rank stand, and then repeat that over and over again. Hmm. Oh, wow, this is interesting. Grab that blueprint from out of bounds. Yep. <laughs> really, probably just wasn't easy. corners here. Probably wasn't easy to get the uh, get the to the blueprint Street. in a spot where you could grab from out of bounds. Nice fifty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> So we need to grab this balloon, and then we can leave. What about the other All balloon? Right. Oh, you already did the other balloon, I guess. Yeah, yeah we got the other balloon on the way in. Wow. So we're going to be doing fall-off storage. If you fall off a ledge, and then jump the frame after, and then aerial, you stall the object and can walk at a faster speed. So... I didn't think of that. That's really cool. This makes this room pretty fast. just really enjoy how many small optimizations there are in this type of test, because it's like... You know, ultimately, uh, they add up so much. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like I saw a few people saying uh, in like discourse and stuff. Oh, I wonder how many big skips will be found for this. There's a couple big skips that like you know run barrel resolution and stuff like that, which save like multiple minutes. But for the most part, all of the time save here is just through optimizations and like. Tiny little things which save a little bit of extra time, you know. And those tiny little things like add up and add up and results in what you're seeing right now, so. There's the sunny little banana. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those things where, like, you just gotta wait for that one. It's a bit awkward to end on 74, so there's thankfully one that's just right there. Yep. Ah. Ah, nice. Man, Crash Climb is such a crazy trick. Yeah, it's a good old trick. It's good that, like, even after face walking, there's still a fair bit of trick variety in terms of stuff we do to get around the world. Definitely. Uh, including what you're about to see right here, which we're staying out of bounds, and then we use the edge of the tongues that oh. are quite extended. Oh, that's pretty sweet. That, I think, is new. I don't remember that one. That was in the 2019 load tab, but oh, wow. I optimized it a bit further for this, obviously. That's really cool. So some of those who've been following my Twitter might recognize some frames of this, because I've been posting every now and then the um, 
every 100,000 frames, so that, I think, was frame 500,000 right there. Whoa. Well, that's the time for the minigame. We have 16 um, banana medals, so thanks to our handy tracker. Yeah, so every enemy you shoot here is 20, another 25 points, and it's just a race to get 5,000. So we are picking up as many of those as we can. This honestly course, looks like how Walter was playing this, except Walter wasn't shooting and just dying to the enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, those little uh, 25 point enemies really add up if you're constantly killing them in the tasks. Yeah, it's the 25 point enemies and also um, trying to RNG manipulate how quickly the 250 point bonus to spawn. That's double medal. <laughs> what? That was We sick. shoot two blues, Splin, the first Lanky, one's given to DK, and then the second one's given to Lanky, and both take their CB count up to 75. That's incredible. Moon kicking to the Vulture Race GB. Wow. Was there a reason to maintain the height there, or like the dance skip just wasn't? Oh, it's a spawn snag, so you can't. Yeah, it's a spawn you can't, snag. Uh, skip it, dance. Yeah. Yeah, that's a rough uh, face walk. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely something I wouldn't recommend doing, RTA. Yeah. We're almost at 50% here, getting close. I know, right? <laughs> Pass is slowly getting there. I think we're on, a, on track for around about a five hour run or something like that. So... You might recognize that Diddy's a little um, darker colored here, and it's because yeah. of an interesting quirk with how lighting works. So <laughs> the chunk lighting is set to be dark because it's set to be the tunnel color, but <laughs> the Aztec main area has dynamic lighting turned off. So whilst the area is normally lit, uh, the Kong is still expected to have the color of the uh, tunnel. So, oh. <laughs> oh, what? So, we raised the gong tower. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. So. Oh, it looks really weird with the sandstorm in the black void. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there a reason why you don't do a quick grab for the gold banana at the top? Um, because we need to. Um, you need to have the, the rocket the, barrel. I think. Yeah, it would lose rocket barrel. And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you still can do this tag. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's a really wild lag clip. So feathers have an interesting property in that they stick into a wall and they don't immediately despawn. And you can get around the like, you know, four ammo out at a time limit by firing a bunch of feathers into the wall. So you're like increasing the object count that's loaded by a lot and build up lag that way. This is also an interesting way to do build race. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, that's Aztec, too. I remember when we first discovered this, like, ten years ago, we were all sitting in calls trying to get it. That was pretty fun. 
very fun. One, one of the more fun tricks in the in the game, especially like how it evolved over the years. All right, we are over 50% done. Well, in the case of 101%, we are 50% done. Yeah, exactly. 50.5. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's actually pretty cool how that works out. Because we've done all of Factory, all of Aztec, all of Fungi, right? All of Aztec, all and of all Fungi, of all of Caves. Uh, all so, of Factory. Yeah. Still part of Castle left, but we're doing Japes next. Yep. It's time for our only Japes visit. <laughs> in um, organic runs and glitch speed runs, you'd have to do Japes in two visits because you uh, would only have access to two Kongs, but here we have all five and all the moves, so... How does that count as a skip for the day? <laughs> so, it's a very rough one, that. <laughs> you have to have the lower floor of the riverbed, and you have to jump uh, and touch the GB at a certain height. There is only, like, a slither of that GB collision, which allows for that. Wow. So, it's... It <laughs> not, not to say that you RTA people aren't <laughs> good or, like, crazy enough, but... Probably not RTA five. Oh yeah, just I, I didn't know that it was even possible. That's pretty yeah. cool. I think it was. Uh, not to mention you have to touch it before you get the height gain from the cage. Yeah. So, I think it was. I want to say Orphonium. You found out? I want to ah. say. Oh, it was Corn Cop. My bad. I am so sorry. Dang. <laughs> Dang, got the wrong person. <laughs> How many times uh, during the making of the tasks was like a small trick like that discovered and you had to like go and work it in? Um, thankfully not too much. Um, I was able to like this year hasn't been too like busy in terms of new things that actually make the task faster, so. It hasn't happened too much. There's one case which we'll talk about later, um, which we have to deal with, but uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for, for now, okay. nothing that's uh, noteworthy. Cool. Yeah, because I know that can often be a source of frustration when making tasks. Like, at some point, you just have to you know, accept whatever strats were known at the time of making yeah. the earlier sections of the run. Wow, this is a lot of interesting telegram. Well, no, no. What do you call this again? Stored position? Yeah, graphing? stored position warping. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we fully explained this earlier, but like, in the same way where like, uh, tag Braille Storage lets you set your stored position for telegrabs. You can also set your stored, get stored position and then warp back to it using a grabbable pole or tree like objects. So I guess it just like let us clear out all of those D DK bananas and then go back up to the top of the hill immediately. Yeah. And we also grab both of them at once so we. <laughs> we do a damage down skip uh, hitting the first one, and then the knockback sends us into the second. So we get two GBs in one knockback for that one. Pretty cool. So another community shout out here. Thank you to Jorge the Dragon um, for this. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> It was a very uh, neat uh, skip there, and it involves a lot of RNG manipulation. <laughs> That's amazing. Basically, all of that section there was RNG manipulating that B to slowly move towards that spot. 
<laughs> so if you remember way back in the beginning of the run, where we were doing the DK minecart in Castle, when Balan was looking backward, he had to hold down. Now notice here that he has to hold up. Great control yeah. or consistency. I guess while we're doing this game, any questions from the chat that they are wanting to ask Balam about the tasks? Yeah, this is a good time. Yeah. Top five balloons. Uh, you can jump at full speed. Uh, in my car. What's up with pausing? Uh, if you pause, it sets both uh, stored positions to uh, where you are currently. All collectibles tasks next year, that's for someone else to do. Future projects for Balam, sleeping and rando. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what about in Chunky's minecart? Uh, wait about another three hours or however long it is and watch it uh, on my YouTube. How much time does the BOBR save? Uh, roughly about three minutes. Are you still there? Yes. Are you it's, still there? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> so this is uh, Lux Laura or Lux Lux Laura. Is not an AI-based speedrun. No, this is made by Balam. Like he actually worked out all of the inputs that were required to perform the run through an emulator. You can see those inputs in the bottom left. But yeah, th this is tool-assisted speedrunning. So it's a constructed speedrun uh, that's made over the course of many days. Uh, where all of the best, most optimal strategies are combined and uh, executed as flawlessly as possible. And it basically showcases everything that the game has to offer that couldn't possibly be performed by a, by a human in real time. This is skew climb. <laughs> I was, I was, I, that was one of my favorite tricks when I used to do one on runs. And of course, skew, skewing this section makes all these cage golden bananas very easy to grab. Yep. <laughs> We won't really be using it for the cage gold bananas. We're going on a little bit of a trip here. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go and visit Tiny's Casplat. Yep. <laughs> Do a little bit of a height gain, and we are under the floor, but thankfully close enough to the banana bunches that we can grab them under the floor. Any reason you wanted to be under and not just at the ground level there? Um, you get it to was, do more long jumps or something? Yeah, it was it was just um, routing in the um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? <laughs> it's trying to get into the logs without hitting the cutscene and stuff like that. It's ah, just a yes. little bit faster. Nice <laughs> zinger minute. Really funny to be doing this this area like reverse. <laughs> it does end up saving time. Uh, I think it's around about a second. It saves trying to uh, doing this one in reverse. <laughs> Oh, uh, Sarah asks, uh, how many total hours of uh, coding the tasks did this take, uh, if you happen to track that, although you may not have wanted to. <laughs> I didn't want to. <laughs> I don't Fair enough. Uh, it took two full years of work, so 
I took a bit of a break in the middle because I my computer decided to uh, break, <laughs> and so I lost a lot of the tasks because of that. Oh no! But uh, yeah, so if you don't factor in that time, it took about two years from the time I started routing till the time that I uh, finished the encode. Wow. And for those who don't know, there's also tasses of the two other main speedrunning categories from DK64, NLE and any percent kind of, and I say kind of because it's a clean card run, not a dirty card. Yeah, it's 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 any percent by task video standards, and it's more entertaining than what a dirty card run would be. Yeah. This is also a clean card run of 101, as far as I can tell, because you had the yes. high score board come up in the Nintendo coin. Yeah, it's um, clean card. But thankfully, 101, like, that doesn't matter very much. It loses, what, like, two seconds or something. Honestly, that might be my favorite trick right there. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just, I know, like, it's. On the, uh, the skull. It's, it's a fun little. Uh, on little platforming for sure. It's it's a cool trick. It's just like it's trying to get to the orange um, as fast as you can. <laughs> Glitchless test when uh, someone else will have to make that. Maybe you'll have to make a tea kettle. I say we make T-Gump do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just climb over the wall casually. Nah, so Smack is doing, uh, Biss doing, uh, Kaizo. Yeah, don't, don't want to take, uh, work from Sir Smack when he's got Kaizo. Up his sleeve. That's another one of those shockwave to skip the fairy refill animation. Yeah. And thankfully, in that case, like, the lone zone's right there. Like, it's pretty quick to get, um, get out of there and skip the, uh, long photo animation. <laughs> the, uh,. Yeah, the game is really uh, confused about which chunk well, to have loaded when you move through that area. Yeah. <laughs> I think Falcon said it correct here. A glitchless task results in the comment section telling you how many glitches you are doing in it. It'd, probably, it'd basically be like the Super Mario Brothers task, but ten times worse with the comments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice uh, way to spend the time waiting for the bonus barrel to explode. Yeah, you gotta shoot the balloon and also fire an orange, so yeah. Big lag spikes. Yeah, I tried to avoid it, but unfortunately the uh, high barrier wanted to load. So I have to wait here, because I have to wait for the feather to get to the balloon. If I was to enter the tag out too early, it would deload the balloon, and I think also the feather too, so... Here's a good question so a from thing, here in, in chat. Other cases, so, go ahead. Because in other cases, you were able to shoot a balloon and tag to another Kong, and transfer it's just the Ah, uh, okay, it's just that the balloon is too far away. Yeah. This is also an interesting out of bounds. There's a tiny slither of uh, area here, which doesn't have void, so you can go straight here from there. Yeah, Blam, someone in chat asked, um, how is oranges routed in this run? Carefully. <laughs> that, that, that's the summary of it. It's, um, as I said earlier, it's I map out everything I'm going to need oranges for, 
and then um, try to place fairies and acquisition of oranges, like the freestanding ones on the ground, um, to enable that as much as possible. Yeah, and for instance, like, we try to skip as many fairy cutscenes as possible, but you don't get the ammo and everything refills from the fairies if you do that. You, we just saw that fairy Blam guy right there. He purposely waited to get the orange refill there, so we have extra oranges again. Welcome to bonus stage. I don't think you could actually have skipped that refill because there was no loading zone to enter. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it, we try to place the refills in the best place as possible, um, so that we can skip the ones that can be skipped, and we uh, do the ones that aren't skipped, and make as much advantage of that as possible. Yeah, I think so far there was only one fairy that you needed the refill purely for the for the uh, inventory, and not just because you couldn't skip it. Yeah, and that one was just because Aztec <laughs> uses a lot of oranges. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, like, oranges have so much use, especially for dance skips. And, like, I guess if you're a randomizer player, you wouldn't really know because we removed dance skips, but, like, there's a lot of creativity when it comes to them. Yeah, and dance skips take a lot. Them yeah, dance skips take a lot, and then whilst phase walks are a thing, sometimes it's not on a great angle, and there's a better angle if you can just orange clip through. It's a balancing act, and it's one of the challenges of routing, but it's also one of the most satisfying things whilst routing if you can get an orange route, which just works. Yeah. Plus, every dance skip to me is very satisfying. That was like a big part of pushing down the time in this category was just finding as many dance skips as you can. Considered like using the high jumps to uh, dodge the fireballs, but I guess that could be a, a relatively low lag way of doing it. It surprisingly reduces a lot of lag. Um, I'm not quite sure why it just does. So <laughs> I'll give it a try. Ah, uh, pause. We pause, skip <laughs> we pause exit that one because A we need to tag. And also, B, we skip a small cutscene where Squawk tells us that, hey, you should turn this key into k um, We're not yeah. going to quite turn it into k Also, you're going to be able to go into Angry Aztec, a level yeah. that we've already fully completed. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to bonus stage. Sometimes it's that easy, huh? <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> well done. And that's shape's done. Oh, already. Yep. <laughs> Might be that we're going fast or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> Probably. We have definitely some some of the shorter levels saved for this section of the run, so our percentage is really climbing fast. Once we were done with the uh, fungi, we had yeah, now what do we have? Of, some of Galleon and some of Castle, shapes. and that's it. And Helm. And Helm, yeah. Right. Helm minus the key room, basically. 
Uh, someone asked how much percentage is stored behind those blueprint GBs. There's <laughs> there's 0.4% per GB. Um, 40 GBs, that is 6.4%, if my math is correct. Oh uh, yeah, that's a good point. Our percentage counter doesn't factor in the value of the blueprints until they're turned in. So you're going to gain what is 40 by 0.4, uh, one, no, six. I'm bad at math. Business folks, it's we currently have yeah, 11.6 of 16%. 16%? Yeah. Yes, so you'll get 16% at the very end from the blueprint turn ins. What's the deal with the Helm Elves? We'll find out soon enough, I think. Yeah, Helm is uh, coming up after this level, so. Helm 2, I don't think I've ever thought I would say that. <laughs> Is this lag actually beneficial to in it's, the rocket barrel flying sometimes? It's uh, to move further forward. The issue is not getting up high, it's getting up far at certain points. So we shoot, yeah, we shoot a bit to just go further. Right, because the way to get top speed in Rocket Barrel is basically to hold A, but it'll also make you go too high if it yeah. weren't lagging. It's just yeah. an interesting case of lag is actually helping your movement more than hurting it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, external castle is extremely laggy, as you can see. Yeah, we're going to be pausing on a lot of these lane zones. Um, pausing uh, means that ambient lag, so lag affected from geometry and stuff like that, doesn't uh, happen as much, let's say. So, um, so basically the, uh, the loading zone transition is actually sped up slightly if you're yeah. paused in a particularly laggy area. Yeah. That's why also, whenever we take a fairy picture, it's also why we pause on entering loan zones is to cancel out the uh, fairy lag. Oh yeah. Alright, final one, cop mayhem time. This might be a good time for me to go get a snack. <laughs> And uh, just for the record, like, the barrels move in a predictable pattern every time in these minigames, so you can literally just pick out the pattern you want to move in, and then you can avoid them every time as long as you know how the barrels will react. Yeah, I try to pick the most interesting route to go, um, uh, but it's always kind of just like trying to find one where you're not just going to get blown up early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for most of the, like, patterns where you don't get hit, like, you don't even need to, like, speed up or slow down. You can literally just go as fast as you can, and then you'll avoid it every time. That's the, uh, ball ring GB done. And... Now we're going to have an uh, interesting clip, I think. <laughs> yep. So, Castle is laggy. <laughs> you can just wow. charge through that wall. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, I'm surprised that worked. Actually, no, it's, I'm not surprised. It's DK64. <laughs> you know what I was about to say. Yeah, we're down to only nine blueprints left. Yeah. Right, because Helm doesn't have any blueprints. It's just some of Galleon and... Uh... And this level. Is that it? Uh, this level, Helm 2, Galleon 2. Yeah. 
The reverse charges are really nice. Oh, and you can Ooh, on the end of it. That was cool. <laughs> and then the one final charge of the cutscene. Oh yeah, Zachary, so like a lot of the little things are not so easy to implement. Like, I don't know. There, there might be a handful of dance skips. I, I do kind of want to see if the Diddy um, cage in Fungi dance skip is feasible to do reliably. Um, I want to see if the DK moon kick in Caves 5 Dark Cabin is learnable. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I don't know if it can be done consistently, but might be able to learn how to do it. So we don't have a rank sprint for that, so we do have to, unfortunately, a rank stand jump the entire way, but um, it is still faster to <laughs> uh, jump that and walk that normally than purchasing a rank stand sprint. Right. Well, also, like, the entire wrong barrel resolution route concept is something that we tried RTA, and it was just barely slower than not doing it, at least the way that we had currently had it routed. But uh, Adam and I are still looking into ways to try to make it faster. It's one of those things where, like, it's slower for RTA because they're not able to fill that time as much as we can. So, time saves that might be slower for RTA will be faster for Tass because we can do more with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting... the last time I've seen a primate punch lag clip. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, quick guesses on what the final time for this one will be. 48. Um, 43? Oh, 48 seems a little fast. Oh yeah, there's less beavers in this one, isn't it? No, oh, wait, I've done like a... 30-something. I would say 43. Take the middle of our guesses. <laughs> 45. <laughs> but yet again, faster to void there instead of uh, pause exiting and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, you can wind on the gray bit, huh? So, <laughs> Castle's laggy. Um, so, a lot of those kinds of minor uh, things like taking a warp, we have to kind of c carefully consider how much we do that because it generates a lot of lag and it's pretty slow. So, I <laughs> did a lot of rerouting for Castle. Um, just based off trying to reduce the amount of times I'm warping up to the top of um, Castle. Hmm. Also, don't need that warp for. <laughs> 
Nice. <laughs> Love that clip. That was the other thing, Skip. Yeah. <laughs> That one actually looks doable as well. Oh, right. Oh, this part. This yep. part's really nice. Oh. I forgot Drunk. that this is actually in the route. Wow. Did you do a lag assisted boulder push? No, that I just had to wait for the lag to clear for some reason. It, I had to wait a fair bit before doing that push. <laughs> uh, I thought maybe like because it was lagging, it was like moving me back more. What okay, the? This, I don't even know if this requires explanation, to be honest. Just, yeah, just watch. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's nothing that we could tell you that that would make this make more sense than it already is. I'm just gonna post DK64 LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Uh... Um, I, do, I guess the explanation is pretty straightforward, right? You bring the boulder in, it's chunky. Use boulder clip out of bounds, the golden banana's already loaded into that box, and you just go get it. <laughs> Why doesn't everyone do that? <laughs> Doesn't look like we need to use the cam skip to get over the maze here. You just literally clip to the walls. Yep. Imagine this castle in Helm uh, Battlecrown is very fun to task. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> 
These guys are just having a friendly conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Splat. You know. It almost looks like they're your bodyguard. Interesting choice to skip a bunch in the greenhouse. Yeah, there's a lot of line keeping on us in Castle. True, most of them are just on the way. I mean, like, in RTA, we skip a balloon. Stage. The last team in the turtle, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. Do not, do not worry about the um, more than three melons out at a time thing on this minigame. No, because it doesn't matter. Like, the only reason why we keep to that three melons at a time rule with Peril Path Panic is because you're slowing them fair. Oh, right. So the length of the minigame is not actually fixed yeah. um, in the same way that it is for these ones. Okay. Yeah, exactly. This one's an auto-scroller. You have to wait the same amount of time regardless. So, uh, yeah. Sense. I can be less uh, mindful of lag. Happy three hours. Happy three hours, everyone. Happy three hours. Cancel that you use the Splat's punch to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's satisfying. <laughs> That's a pretty cool, uh, Level tag barrel storage movement. Chain push, the classic. Yep. <laughs> oh. Wow. That's really clever. Wow. I hadn't seen that one before, I don't think. Or if I had, I just forgot about it. And then you can Moontail over uh, some collision to get out of Bones and Void. That's so cool. Now try doing this in a RTA speedrun. <laughs> 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 this is true, uh, hard mode. Yeah. So an alert, Sir Smack, and drop the lights in the DK puzzle room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For Kaizo, anyway. Yeah. Hmm. 
Oh. For a second I thought we were gonna use the new you know 170 speed baboon balloon, but uh we are this not boom ballooning it on at all. This is faster. <laughs> Welcome to bonus stage. <laughs> I would say try that in like a randomizer or glitchless run with skid jumping is banned. <laughs> or jumping yeah. out of skid jumps are banned, I should say. And it's also much better to just PT2. So this isn't the end of castle, but we are going to do this um, bonus barrel whilst we're here. Man, Cass makes some of these like skid jump. Uh, skid jump strats to get to the top of the lobby like look so effortless, but they're not. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not easy. Also, tagging in Castle Lobby isn't absolutely horrible when compared to all other tagging options because if you need to tag a kong um <laughs> you either go into the top of castle which means you're getting a really laggy warp or you go into the one at the bottom of castle which is quite a detour or you go to the lobby so lobby isn't so bad if you're going to be tagging to go to a different kong obviously you want to minimize tagging where possible but if you need to maybe consider the lobby Makes sense. Oh. Wait, did you trigger the cutscene? No. No. You stepped no. on the platform, but I guess it doesn't count. If you step on it for not a huge amount of time, um, it doesn't trigger the cutscene. You have to be quick, though. Okay. I think it's like maybe like five frames or something like that. Huh. <laughs> Shout out Sophonium. <laughs> Wait, she found that? No, she didn't find that, but like, it's um, her kosher. Oh, kosher. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Kosher Phonium. That was a really interesting way to clip into the library. Yeah, <laughs> chocolate and lag clips really help with that. Getting a lot of tiny bananas are individual in this level, so you have to walk down and collect these. Yeah, 50 of tiny bananas are just down this pathway, so we have to go at least down some of it. <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> Huh. I guess similar to pausing, playing an instrument is also a way to reduce lag. Yeah, because you uh, use the TV void. Yeah, who could have seen that one coming? Wait, but we've already done the car race. Oh, so we're just here for bananas. Yeah. <laughs> There's 30 bananas in here. We have to come here at some point. Okay. Nice. <laughs> and that's the end of castle. Ooh. All right, we're getting uh, close to being done here. We just have Helm and Galleon left. Yep. And we got uh, about 51 minutes to finish the run in order to get sub four. So that four o'clock mark is uh, not four o'clock, four hour mark is uh, quickly approaching.
Hmm. I believe. Type one in chat if you believe in the subfall. No, wow, no, no, no. Obayo not believing. <laughs> what happens if you... Well, I guess you're doing it. Yeah, you started the saxophone cutscene and then the fairy interrupts you, but then yeah. squawks. Oh my god, okay, he's, he's holding it like there. a sword. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So the way it works is that the cutscene will be pulled up as soon as you are not having a cutscene being played. So by overlapping those two cutscenes, <laughs> um, you essentially shorten the amount of time to get that kind of refill. I really like seeing the Kongs walking around with their instrument. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone's favorite task minigame right here. Welcome to bonus stage. <laughs> well done. Wow. That that's incredible. That's like a 25 second time save over right here. Yeah, you just got to know whether <laughs> you can just got to RNG manipulate some them. Yep. Easy time safe right there. <laughs> just pre-shoot everything immediately. Yeah, just uh, ask questions later, kind of style. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're back in Helm, like, two hours later, maybe more. So, switch help medals. Uh, normally right. you have to complete mini games uh, to get the medals, but if you have the camera locked elsewhere, the medals behave exactly like gone bananas, which you can spawn snag. So you can spawn snag them without completing the mini games. However, that is huge. The big problem which we have to kind of get around is the fact of we cannot load any of these rooms early. So I'm precisely moving very close to outer bounds, um, or oh, void out triggers, just so I don't load Chunky's room, for example. But thankfully, each of the Kong's rooms is its own chunk. Yes. Separate from the main area. So yeah. you can manage it, I guess. Yeah, so like from this angle, you have Lanky and Chunky's on screen, but you already did those rooms, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah exactly. so now we're going through. It looks like that was uh, taking advantage of the orang stand no clip. Yep. To get into Tiny's room. And then it's like, as long as you don't load DK's room and Diddy's room. Well, those the last two. The well, DK's bonus... doesn't matter too much because you can always play it. But... Yeah, and also um, the medals themselves reset to their default state on every map load. So, oh, so once you're leaving the crown, everything will be available to snag again. Yeah. But would you have to still do do these mini games if you want to clear the timer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Though I don't know if it would actually be necessary to clear the timer. Huh. Oh, I didn't know you could do a crash climb off of an enemy. Yep, it's a wall you can bonk into. Interesting.
<laughs> Did he short enough to just duck under that swing? Yep. <laughs> and here we go again. Or not. Okay. So this is interesting. He will clear Diddy's mini games. Because they're both Diddy does have fast. very Yeah, they have very quick ones. Because yeah, you can just phase walk through that, and then the other one you literally just cheese to find the correct one. Yeah, so I could see this actually being faster than eating another, like, uh, reset to main menu or save and quit. Yeah. I mean, especially with 10 main minute. Yep. <laughs> It's just RNG manipulation and uh, to not only get the uh, Kremlin to be the right Kremlin uh, in terms of which one has the uh, one to unlock the switch, but also get it to be as close to as possible. Oh, I didn't know you could face walk on that wall. And there's the final <laughs> piece in Helm. Wow, that's really good routing. Yeah. And that is Helm done. <laughs> Took two segments, but we did it. Nice. So, it kind of begs the question, if you had enough time in Helm timer, could you have done all five spawn snags and then left and gone to Fungi to set up the wrong barrel resolution and actually not needed to do Helm in two trips? Um, we could have, but you, you would have needed, like, you know, More a fair bit minutes. of time. Yeah. Yeah. You would have needed to turn blueprints in at some point. Yeah. Like, it just ends up being what? more what advantageous. Stop loading my clip. Thank <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is a DK64 LOL moment right there. Yeah. Last boss key of the run. Yeah. Puff toss. You know, this is the worst boss in the game. Uh, uh, who could ever like Puff Toss? There's absolutely no one, no one would in ever chat right now to play Puff, like Toss Puff Toss for fun for like three hours yeah. in a row, right? Yeah, I mean, last night. Madness right there. You know, I, I much prefer <laughs> King Cutout. I'd, I'd do King Cutout for about seven hours. Better boss right there. Yo, how's everyone's predictions going? Well, let's see. We have... Uh, I think I'm going to be... It looks like I'm going to be just under like what the final time is going to be. I guess like a 3.38, so like you need to do Galleon in like 11 minutes. Yeah, there's, there's, there's quite a few people who have guessed under uh, 3.17. So... <laughs> Those people aren't winning. <laughs> I feel like my prediction is going to be fairly close. I think I'll be under a little bit. But I chose what I chose so that I can have it a one. For those who don't know, the stars are always in a set position. Um, so this is pretty straightforward from a task perspective. Yeah. There's a lot of, um... <laughs> what angle do I need to, um, move at? Alright, 
just change my angle to that and then just hold Z. Oh, I just noticed that, like, the ones that you have all of them light up. Yep. In the tracker. That's cool. So, slowly but surely, over the next uh, insert amount of time that I'm not going to reveal minutes, you will slowly see the tracker turn more blue. Last crown. Last crown, I am going to be very thankful to never have to do a crown again. <laughs> This is the one in Vanilla where we just run around the outside because the Kasplats can't catch her, the Kremlings can't catch you. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is that they spawn so quickly that you can just wait for another one to spawn and continue bouncing. <laughs> Alright, ten crowns. And no one's in the chat is crying because crowns are done. <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> Are you trying to push the balloon from this platform? Oh no. Ah. Aha. Ooh. That's a pretty cool choice. I almost wanted to do the um, rando strap where you. Um, shockwave from below, just as a shout out to the rando community, but unfortunately ended up being slower. Dang. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Another uh, banana transfer, I noticed, from Chunky to DK. Yeah, DK's bananas in Galleon are pretty rough. Um, yeah, so especially if you are planning to skip the key blast somehow, because there's like 15 or 20 in there. Well, you'll have to just wait and see whether we do. Yeah. It's so funny how hilariously fast Big Bug bashes in Tass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I even, like, <laughs> RNG manipulated it so that as soon as, like, the text would be skipped, the bug would be right under the uh, swatter. So, literally, that is the perfect time for the big bug bash. How can you, uh, like, yeah, like a frame one swat, basically, yeah. at the start of the minigame. But how can you actually manip something that's, like, you have no control, essentially? <laughs> You're just watching so, a cutscene. So... What's happening is the before bonus barrels, I am changing my movement ever so slightly. Um, this means that I enter the barrel on a different uh, clock cycle, which ah, changes yes. the RNG seed entering the map, which means mm -hmm. that the fly goes in a different place. So all of your minute has to be done uh, on the entry or mm -hmm. of the barrel, well, not after yeah. you're in the barrel. Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the second time we're doing that bonus as you remember gosh was it two hours ago we did that one um yeah. for the uh last bonus uh, barrel in the wbr chain Galleon, yep mm -hmm. oh yeah all the kremlin koshes are uh manipulated to no end <laughs> like there's so much rmg manipulation in a lot of these bonuses I really like how uh, we just refuse to take the cannon in this area. Yeah, the cannon's slow. <laughs> uh, 
Oh wow, that's a cool uh, jump into the tag. Oh, we get TABS cam for this one. Yeah. Now where do we think we're going, chat? Where are we dropping? Hmm. Ooh. We're already Next not fish. going. Oh no, yeah, yeah, this is the seal. Oh, seal, yeah. This yeah. is the be blast. Blackfish doesn't even spawn yet. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Would be pretty amazing if you could somehow spawn snag mechfish, but it's not like you get the GP in the main area, so I don't think that would work. Ooh. And then that's game sail race, and now we're DK and sail race, a uh, pretty uncommon sight for speedruns nowadays. Nice. So <laughs> if you didn't need to buy Gorilla Grab, we won't even be buying Baboon Blast. <laughs> Uh, no, we I need think you have to do Japes. Oh, yeah. Japes, yep, that would do it. Uh, Ooh. and then also to spawn oh, the arcade leather. Yeah, Japes Factory, and that's it. Those are the only two mandatory B blasts. That's a very interesting out of bounds path because you would think that you would just like, you know, hop back in where the, the tower is, but I actually know about this because I was messing around with the void map on the, on the practice. Isn't line. that path out of bounds are like it, razor thin? Yeah. So there's a really interesting thing with the void zones in most levels where there's like a giant rectangle pathway that is not a void area that circles the entire level. And in some areas of Galleon, like, the main areas intersect that, like, external pathway. So you couldn't have gone directly, uh, like, up to the back of the tower, because that's a void trigger. But you can go around that, like, rectangular outside path of the level and then come back in from the back of the room. Wow, that's really incredible. <laughs> Yeah. I wish I could do Power. that. that looks Power fun. of Crash Climb. <laughs> I, I don't like that many games, so it'd be really cool to just go straight to the finish line. Yeah. This is also on low water, so <laughs> getting to these gold towers isn't easy. <laughs> And also, not possible without a lag. Yeah, like, the Diddy one required the lag of the, uh, Kisplat respawning. Uh -huh. Welcome to bonus stage! Well done! Uh, crash climbing RTA is not really a thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's very difficult. Like, even getting one is pretty hard, but like to chain them together is just ridiculous. And here, randomizer players are shocked that all of the uh, clams contain pearls. Yep, yeah, and we need all of them. Which is also another thing that will shop rando players. So this is a slightly different route to what most people will be used to um, in terms of inside the chest. Uh, from my calculations, this saves two frames over the other method. So hmm. yeah, I did a distance to from pearl to pearl calculation, and this has a slightly uh, lower distance than the regular route. Hmm. I thought that was the regular route. I thought the regular route was to go to the bottom left. One after the know. middle. The one you just did is the one I've been doing in 101 for years. Bottom okay. left is what I did. And what I still do, I guess. I know, maybe I was influenced by Rain Rush. I'll blame him. I mean, there was like one point, Bismuth, where we switched from some older route to this route, but I think that was like at least five years ago. No, sorry, at least eight or nine years ago. 
Here's another spawn snag. Uh, this one is for the GB, which spawns from the ship. Like the Diddy one that you slam the switch for. Yep. That's there? Yep. Wow. It's really it's always it's there. there because like you would think it's in the ship, but I guess it can't be because the ship is always moving. Yeah. That's a legit, I didn't know that. I think it was TJ who found that out, I want to say. All right. Is it like the case that all of the GBs that spawn in the major areas of levels have to like be stored somewhere? Or Yeah, yeah they're stored somewhere. Interesting. So, I have a bit of a story. Uh... <laughs> Tasks usually get invalidated after a while by someone discovering something. Uh, in the 2016 LOTAD, it was the discovery of Caves Beetle Skip. 2019, it was the fairy storage, like a couple days, like a year or so after. This one uh, has been invalidated by 20 frames by a randomizer streamer called JX Jacob, who was <laughs> so bad at Mechfish that. Um, he found a really, really messed up strategy that somehow saved 20 frames. Now, me and him, we have a bit of beef. And, you know, when YouTubers have beef, they, ha they have a diss track. I'm not about diss tracks. I'm all about diss limericks. So here's my limerick to get back at Jacob from validating the task so soon. There was once a streamer called Jake, who DK64R skills was such a flub. In the Fish of the Sea, 20 frames were freed. How the noob did it made a Tassa shrug. Wow. There we go. That was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but what, did, what did he actually do? Um, it turns out you can shoot the uh, shots uh, if you hit for the very, very corner whilst the fan's spinning, it also works, and that gives quick shot. Oh, wow. So you don't need to do the orange trick or the shoot seven frames apart trick or anything like that. Does that work on all three targets? Because I think so, yeah. I, I knew... It definitely works on the top two. Sort of. On rare occasions, I've been able to make the top left one trigger in the corner but I didn't know that it was something you could do all the time. Yeah, no, it's, you can do it all the time. You don't um, you don't need to do the orange shot or the seven frame trap. Welcome to bonus stage. When's um, practice rum showing the size of that corner for practice? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we're saving that time for RTA 2. Saving 20 frames. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could save more than 20 frames if you don't even have to, like, set up the double shot or, the or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I just noticed we're done all the blueprints. Yep, final blueprint was the uh, Diddy one. But also, we don't have the ship spawned out yet. Um, right. This is really helpful because it reduces a lot of lag when navigating lighthouse area. So we're trying. A lot of the kind of idea of this reorganized galleon was trying to push the spawning of the ship to as late as possible. Wait, why is it so dark here? So this is a side effect to TBS. Uh, TBS inside the tunnel, so it stores that tunnel light. And then we go to the lighthouse area, so the tunnel light is then projected onto the lighthouse chunk. This also causes some funny visual effects that you'll see once we turn the lighthouse on. Um, I'll go over that in a bit. But yeah, this is O-Banana. We're doing four O-Bananas here. Uh, it's a four 32 GBs. So if you do need to take a quick break for whatever reason, to hug your dog or to get a drink or to jump up and down because you're seeing a TAS, 
to do it now, you've got probably around about another two and a half, three minutes to do so. Or just spam the shower with old banana. Or that. <laughs> I would go up and leave, but I'm afraid to do that again. Based on what happened last time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone needs to hug that. If you have a dog, hug your dog. Dogs need all the love we can give them. So we're going to do a uh, transfer here. We're shooting the tiny balloon and giving it to DK. This is also your chance chat. Um, yeah, again, if you have any questions about the run or anything like that, I'm happy to field questions. What's my favorite tra task trick this task? Uh, the chunky uh, dance skit for Japes Underground. What's next for the DK64 Tassin scene? Um, I'd like to see someone do um, Reverse Key Order or something like that. How many cups of tea were consumed over the course of this Tass? Uh, 5.2 billion. <laughs> what excites you about the Tass? Uh, I wanted to get... There's a certain goal that I had for this Tass and I wanted to achieve it. I wanted to also show or something that was pretty optimized. How's my day so far? It's going pretty good. Got a wonderful chat right here. Uh, in Fungi Forest, uh, was there an instance of where you were duping kegs? Um, yes, there was. Uh, in short, if you place the keg down right as you are destroying it, it will persist and that's how you duplicate the keg. Was there an actual reason to use Depart on Arcade? Yes, uh, when you dismount uh, ladders, if you use both D-pad up or down and the direction you want to go, it saves a frame when dismounting. Submitting to task videos, no, it's in the FAQ. Who is the best Kong, DK? The correct choice. Yeah. <laughs> And then we got one more open on it, I think. Hey, Blam, when does DK64 Randomizer version 4 come out? Um, you should ask Al Rock that. Oh, <laughs> I didn't okay. know we got, <laughs> we got a few things to figure out first. <laughs> How long do I think a tag in a 101 task would be? Um, with Jacob rolling and just general time saves from tagging, probably a low three hours, maybe 3.30. Mm. Depends on the implementation, I guess, also. Because if, uh, assuming that you don't allow, like, freely unlimited switching in the middle of cutscenes and other, like, actions that we would normally block it. Yeah. All right, I think that's, yep. That's the final... Right. All blueprints uh, turned in? Blueprint. Nope, Above we've 90%. still got chunkies, oh. but... Oh, no. I wasn't paying close attention. I love that clip. <laughs> I'm glad you like that one. <laughs> uh, old backwards ladder grab trick. Yep. But it's even cooler because you can also use it to get out. Because that's a double-sided... Uh, Double-sided yep. uh, gate. Yep. I don't see Mario doing that in Womp's Fortress when kicking off. <laughs> yeah, SM64 <laughs> is clearly not as good as this. Mm. So, remember the chunk light? 
<gasps> Whoa! It's a party, man. And the lighthouse is so bad that it's projecting darkness. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, it's an nice. inverse lighthouse. <laughs> That's so cool. Ooh! Oh, that's... That's in my top five balloons now. And now it's light out? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Morning. Lighthouse is simultaneously so good and not so good that mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes everything completely light except what it's trying to make light. <laughs> I have a very niche question about the Lighthouse GB. Uh, sometimes, and I have no idea why, the cutscene of the GB spawning starts early before so, it loads the outside. Any, what any I have learned there? from that is that I think, as far as I understand, it requires you to have exited to the main area of Galleon before doing oh before pulling the lever uh, i i don't I, like know. coming out of the bee blast and then doing the lighthouse something like that yeah i it's it's weird um i'm constantly looking into it but not something there's that i still... come up with some form of consistent setup for yeah there's a few like minor things in this game that are still kind of unsolved mysteries and that's probably one of them Oh. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize you could just get that without even breaking the top uh, top barrel. Hmm. I'm realizing that my guess for the final time is not not going to be matched. Yeah, we're gonna the lamb's gonna have to tell us the actual final time is. From what I can see, uh, it's not too far off, maybe like 10 seconds off. Okay. But that 10 seconds might make all the difference for the winner. Oh, yeah, well, I will I will say what the actual final time is, but like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to be winning. My time has come and gone a couple minutes ago. early stop on the first GB. Yep. <laughs> well done. 30. So, you know, we're eight GBs away. We've still got a couple of medals and two fairies left. And we've got 17 minutes before we hit that four hour mark. And we also have to beat K rule. Yeah, which and is like a minimum 12 minutes. So yeah, 11, 12 minutes. So we've like that, that, that sub four is looking harder and harder as the time goes on. <laughs> There's one metal, and one of our missing fairies. Okay. 
So we're still not done with Galleon yet. We've still got a couple GBs and a medal, medal left. Finish, yeah. Looks like. I feel like you would have done the other fairy already, though. Although... There's one fairy that we haven't gotten yet. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what that is, because I thought that you had done the five door ship with Tiny in the Bungalion section. Yeah, we did that then. I it's think, it's, I think it's a banana island fairy, right? The one close to it. Yeah, it's that one. Oh. Uh. <laughs> we don't get that fairy until the end. Interesting. Oh. You can just spawn snag the. Uh... The yeah. on guard GB? Yeah. So you don't actually need that to use on guard. Cool. That was a pretty cool rod, actually. I like that. Yeah. That's probably the end of Galleon. Looks like it. Person with the closest guess gets a gift sub to the Kisses for speedruns. Oh, right. I, 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 like, I like Jacob's answer better. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> From a Kong of your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've got four more GBs left and one fairy. But why are we here if we still are missing a fairy? <laughs> it's faster, I suppose, to not have to watch the cutscene of the door opening. That's really interesting. So. We're also missing a fairy. <laughs> the rarer GBs. Like, even though it's blocked off, the door is closed, we'll still despawn when you get close to it. So you have to do some tricky manipulation in order to get it before it despawns. You can't get it with uh, DK because uh, it's a tiny GB. This isn't Randomizer. Yeah, it doesn't have the free trade agreement unlocked. Yeah. Only a handful of GBs in the game are free trade. Usually, ones that were like in cutscenes, like the car race and seal race. I like this choice of routing to finish with these GBs. Mm hmm. So <laughs> there was an idea I had where if you take a fairy picture because the TPM, which is active right now, um, it is possible to skip that uh, boulder cutscene and it would be faster aside from the fact of just some weird stuff with TPM, which means that you have to do some stuff which makes it slower. So. Wow, that's really satisfying uh, 101. Right as you're hunky chunky outside of K rule. Yeah. If, and... the if the final time stopped here, my guess would have been really good. <laughs> yeah, it would have. <laughs> so, this is the sub four. I don't know what if it, what if the task is just worse than all the RTA players. Well, true. <laughs> task is just not that skilled. Yeah, uh, I was debating between guessing 350801 and 340801, and I went with the wrong one. So even though 
Um, this is K. Rool. Um, still want to save as much time as I can. <laughs> a lot of lag reduction you can do. Oh, yeah, you don't even really need to climb the poles. So how how far through the making of the test were you when you realized that it was going to be sub four? Given that it's pretty close, apparently. Um, I think I was still a little unsure in Galleon because I had to reroute a lot of Galleon, and um, if I had performed exactly how I did in the low tad, it would have been over four hours. Wow. So you actually had to find time save in the final level. So, well, it was not necessarily to find time save, but I was still like, uh, well, I'm not sure if my route and time save that just comes from doing this better is going to be enough for sub four. I think by the time I got through about halfway through Galleon, I realized it was probably sub four. Uh, so, is it also sub four in fast time? Power on? What? We'll find out. Power on? It... Yeah, I guess we'll find out. Um, so for Diddy phase, he probably knows that Blam wasn't bringing life what? probably as fast as he could have been. <laughs> um, he was waiting for a specific frame so that K. Rule wouldn't have like a running start during his cutscene, which speeds up the fight. Were you like uh, facing the other way because you did a, a jump into the pole? Yeah, if you press, uh, you can buffer an A press to jump into the pole. And, uh, nice. <laughs> it doesn't save any time, it's just... Which is funny. Ah. Interesting spot for the first banana. Wow, really taking advantage of the long arm. Ah! Uh, that's really clever. K Roll phase, or all of K Roll has an interesting property where the ground outside of the arena will just warp you back to the center of the arena. As if they knew you could escape <laughs> and didn't want you to get stuck. So that actually reduces the travel time to the last pad. Huh. So, Tiny phase. Tiny is just chilling on the pole. <laughs> Facing away from whatever's happening in the ring. Well, you know, she didn't want to see whatever cable's got behind there. <laughs> Oh, right. Someone in chat pointed out that we still don't have any tiny moves. So, there's a mini monkey barrel in this fight. I mean, the small Kong's already small, right? <laughs> yeah. Not that small. 
but thankfully there is a trick. Oh wow, and using the uh, the central warp is really convenient for that. So... Basically as long as you enter the barrel before it finishes fading in, you can use the move. Yeah, you get a couple frames of a blood cop in the barrel, and it just lets you use the move. It's great. Yeah. And actually, when we were doing, when we were doing, um, well, there was a portion of like the five Kong era for any percent where we would skip rocket barrel and jump into the rocket barrel and diddy phase that way to save time mm -hmm. on not buying rocket barrel. And I know yeah, several was... people lost runs to that. <laughs> well, in terms of when Five Kong was the fastest route, uh, it was only active for one day. I remember that because it was Bismuth who found that. Yep. <laughs> Still wasn't even a in single day. No ISG. Any percent no I see skip tiny fate or buying mini monkey? Or is it yeah, so better to just buy ponytail? Nope, you skip mini monkey. Oh boy, so you have to do four insta jump ins. Uh huh. Yeah. And if you fail one of them you lose like 30 seconds it is or something like that. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I think you just skip free and tiny entirely. We have a prediction for how many back folks will be will we see in Chunky Fizz. That's a good prediction. Almost there. One more phase left. <laughs> we got a face walk in there. <laughs> nice. No backflip. Hold chat. <laughs> If it loses, Who predicted like, six backflips? <laughs> Maybe they thought we'd be backflipping into the barrel, but we're just good jump, long jumping. I didn't want to, like, I wanted to, like, be sweaty and save all the time that I could get. <laughs> yeah, I feel like backflips might lose lag frames. And yeah. You're not gonna do it for that reason. Right. Time is coming up. There's one. Ah, one. Alright. 
GG. So I have 35901. Is that correct? A uh, little bit off. The final time is 35846. Uh, yeah, I think because my timer's off, we're gonna have to like play this all again uh, to like retime it. So sorry. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> all right. So predictions. Uh, I have it right here. In third place. Wait, wait. Is... Are we doing? Are we doing closest while going over or just closest overall? Closest overall. Okay. So. Uh, Nintendo Sara, you are in third place. Uh, you are the closest without going over. In second place is Have a Great Day. Uh, and on, then by 10 seconds, the person in first place, hopefully when... There we go. Is... When it gifts, Orphonium. Orphonium! <laughs> nice Congrats. guess, Orphonium. Yeah, what were the guesses by... by so... Any? I'm not going to reveal all of them, because <laughs> there's 60 guesses in here. But Nintendo mm. Sarah got a 40321. Mm. Have a great day it was a 35543. And Orphonium was a 35553. Wow, oh, that's I'm actually surprised it was that far off for the. I also guess. thought that there would be some like 359 guesses or something. Yeah, a lot of people, like I have, I have the graph and stuff like that. A lot of people guess like in the 340 range. Yeah, that's where I guessed. Which I mean, like coming at it now, I'm like, oh well, <laughs> kind of disappointed everyone. They were expecting something 10 minutes better. <laughs> I mean, the Lowlight Lota was pretty good for its time, if you think about it. It was. Um, I really was not on... I was not sure how much lower than four hours to guess. I knew, like, I wanted to guess under four, but... I mean, maybe I was slightly spoiled, like, to think that it was under four, for sure. But, uh... I assumed that you had determined it would be under four, like, with a lot of the run left to go rather than like just figuring it out in the back half of Galleon so <laughs> I had suspicions yeah. that it would be sub 4 like pretty like I think probably around about the time I was done with caves I was like yeah. oh yeah this if, if I keep saving this amount of time then it should be just sub 4 but mm -hmm. you know like when you get close and like you're seeing that it's not <laughs> That if you were to say gnome time, it's like a 401 or a 4 flat, you're like, uh, I'm a little concerned now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Pretty cool. Yeah. How do you feel, Balam? Uh, glad I. A two year long project. Yeah, with, this is this is good. Such a I'm glad that time at the end getting the sub four dream. Yeah, this is this is a good feeling, and it's good to yeah. <laughs> Jake, I was Jake, um, apparently he counts now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he found the mechfish thing. He now counts as a glitch hunter. <laughs> Congratulations, JX Jacob. Your reward is another awful viewer plan. Though, congrats. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, no, it feels good. Um, I think Connor got within an hour, I think it was in 2020 or 2021, um, when he got with an hour of the 2019 Lotad. So it's now good to put an hour and a bit of space between myself and the 101 RTA world record. So that feels good. But yeah, no, it's good to kind if of. If you're get... really being fair to yourself, it's like an hour and a half because you shouldn't compare to the DC record, right? Yeah, this is definitely right. N64. With N64 emulation. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. It really, really looks clean. And uh, I'm really excited by this route. Uh, I'm excited by the possibilities of 
bringing it to RTA again, and like, I just feel like uh, a lot of things were wrapped up in a really clever way with the, the level order readjustment, the, uh, the way that the bonus barrels are tied together, the way that Helm is done with all the spawn snags in the second visit. Yeah. It's really cool. Let me, uh... Is, uh, wrong barrel resolution done in RTA runs? It was done, like, but it was never made faster. So, uh, about how many years ago was it? Maybe in 2021? Or was it earlier than that? Adam will remember. I have not a very good memory about dates and time, but Adam and I both did, uh, runs of WBR route in about two or three years ago in the 1545 relay race. Um, but we just did it for that one year and then we like finished timing the route differences and found that it was slower and obviously it's a lot riskier, more difficult. So it isn't to the point where we would make it our main route. Yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> but it would be really cool if it becomes the uh, fastest route for RTA at some point. So we have also, the two cutscenes. Oh, go ahead, Blam. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to send a picture to you, Tudos, real quick, Ooh. which is of the in game time if you want to put it on oh. uh, screen. Because I don't show it in a video, uh, but I. Uh, where is it? Oh, also, it's safe to say that this is definitely sub for task timing. Yeah, this is sub for task time and sub for. RTA, obviously, but is it sub for IGT? <laughs> yeah, uh, and like IGT is like I really volatile. It. Sometimes <laughs> it's like a couple minutes off too, like depending on like what you're doing. Cause like pausing, it doesn't count toward the in-game time, for instance. So like there's a lot of inconsistencies sometimes. But is this officially under Generally, four hours in-game time? If you reset at least twice, it should be about the same as the real time because um, that's what happens in the RTA route. Anyways, you reset out of Aztec 1 and Castle 1 and then uh, it offsets the amount of time that gets added after the final punch. But you actually did more than two resets, didn't you do an Aztec 1, Great. Castle 1, and Aztec 2? Here mm -hmm. is the final in-game time I'll throw in the corner, 3.59. And there's our 101 cutscene. Yeah. It's very cool. Huh, I'm surprised it's not actually 3.59 and not like 3.58 in the game time. But maybe the third reset doesn't... It's it also like, or maybe other things counteracted in some way that I'm not aware of. It all, yeah, it's counteracted by um, the time that you spend after chunky phase. Yeah, that I know. And also in RTA and such, you spend longer pausing when you like doing pause exit crowns and pause exit GBs and stuff like that. So oh. whereas like with TAS, not only are we not spending as much, but also the pause, extra pausing that we are doing, um, like it doesn't Takes less take off the time from IGT because of the way it's calculated. Interesting. <coughs> so, the TAS nah. is now public on YouTube. <laughs> And I am going to need that video sent to me, Balan, so I can fix the YouTube upload. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll get some sorted out. Uh, also, I do have, just for extra fun, happy data, <laughs> I do have the uh, button counts for uh, how many times we press the A button and such. Mm. So... <laughs> 4,359 
A button presses. 3,959 B buttons. 3,336 Zs. Uh, 956 C ups. 692 C lefts. 400 C rights. 377 R presses. 117 C down presses. 100 start presses. 18 D up presses. 17 D right presses. 15 D left presses. 1 D down press. And no L presses. Makes sense. Wow, I do more L presses than RTA. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well and truly, I wasn't two quite sure. changes on successive frames, I wonder. <laughs> Too hard to count, I'm sure. Um, it, it just, um, it counts for how many presses there were where that button wasn't pressed the previous frame. No, I was thinking about joystick stuff for face Oh, Like, how many yeah. times you had to change magnitude levels. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not calculating that. <laughs> There's no way it's to be calculated, yeah. <laughs> Next. D-pad and vanilla does very little. It lets you control the um, DK Arcade. And that's about it. But you can also play the DK Arcade with the control stick, so... So it doesn't do much.